Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with my good friend Sean, who's going to show you. I'm going to show you how to make your own foil proxy cube. Mine's yes. powered. Yours doesn't have to be. That's right. <laughs> the dog is shaking the camera. <laughs> that was inevitable. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with my good friend Sean, who's going to be showing you. I'm going to show you how to make your own foil proxy cube. The first and most important thing we need to say about making proxies is we have some important disclaimers. Yes. First, do not sell proxies. <laughs> Let me repeat that in case you didn't hear me. <laughs> do not sell proxies. You will get in trouble. Except you like will proxy get in tokens. Trouble. Tokens, now, yeah. There are some you can do, I would say. You can, you know, if you to make some proxy tokens that's with art that you own the rights to, yes. sell those all you want. Um, if you only are, you know, you make proxy cards that you only are to, that's a grayer area and you still shouldn't sell those. Um, don't sell them, it's bad. Second, do not use these proxy cards in any sanctioned event at your local gaming store. You will get not only you, but your local gaming store in trouble and no one wants that, you know. Yeah. Wizards will get mad at us if we do this, but they'll leave us alone if we don't, you know. No sanction. You can't. can't no sanctions. Rule, no selling. Yeah, if you're getting planeswalker points for it, that's bad. It's that's bad. bad. No Your process. store is not allowed to do that. So, other than that, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about cubes. Mm -hmm. um, show you how to do them. But important. Remember those two disclaimers. <laughs> they are really important. So, now another disclaimer. My cube and the technique I'm going to show you will make a what I call a ghetto cube. <laughs> um, the reason I call it ghetto that. Cube. Oh yeah. Is there that it? There are. It makes the cards not perfect. Now, if I'm going to put this up here, yeah, you should be able to see that. If we look at it in the sleeve, you can see that it looks pretty much okay. You know, it's hard to tell there's anything wrong. However, that's not actually true. <laughs> if we look, we can see the back. We can see two important things. Hopefully, the camera can see this. There, you should, you should be able to see that there is great discoloration along mm -hmm. the back of the card. And if you look carefully at the borders, especially down here, you can see that they've been trimmed. It makes for thinner cards. It, they aren't perfect. But there's a reason why we do it this way, you mm -hmm. know. And the important reason is money. Yes. And time. These, this technique isn't cheap. It's not, ex like, overly expensive. But if you expect perfection in your cards, you're going to go broke, for if sure. If you cut corners, on the other hand, ah, uh, ha, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll be yeah. here all week. So, so this technique provides us with great cards that look great in sleeves. You know, yes, I have black sleeves and that helps a lot. That was one of the choices for black. Um, and my players really haven't noticed. I've played this several times and my players haven't commented. Maybe that was out of politeness, but most of them really haven't noticed. No one on YouTube seemed to have commented on the, although, granted, you're not right up close to the card either. Right. Yeah. Um, I will show you how to make perfect sleeves, mm -hmm. or perfect cards, and, sh and you'll find out that it's not worth it. Um, <laughs> we're going to do that. Yeah. So, with that, we're going to go to the materials. <laughs> Thanks. Let's start whenever you want. All right. Now we're going to go over materials. The first and central material we need, foils. Mm -hmm. We need factory foils from wizards. These are real hard piercer bows from cons. A lot of them. And they're all going to be sacrificed for the greater good. Now, the foils we're going to want are preferably the newer foils. The reason why is because some sets don't wipe off well. Now, cons, Fate Reforged, Theros, they all wiped perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, as did Innistrad, and I believe, don't don't hold me to this, but I believe I had an Avacyn Restored that wiped fine. However, <laughs> of these, I wiped these. These two are from, I don't know if you can see that very well. These two are from Dark Ascension. Yeah, that's not a glare spot on the right. That is not that glare. Is... <laughs> I tried wiping the foils, and as I went through, it immediately ate through the foil layer, removing all this good shininess. 
making mm -hmm. this a completely useless card to me. It now sits with my ad cards and checklist cards in my box. <laughs> so. And then you tried it again, and lo and behold. And I did try it again, and got the exact same thing. So, I don't recommend you try this with Dark Ascension foils. Innistrad was fine. I believe Abyssin Restored was fine. I know cons, I did... 700, 800 cons cards. Cons is just fine. Heartpiercer Bow is perfect to, to sacrifice for the greater good. If I find out that Dark Ascension was printed by like a different company, I'm going to put like a link in the description or, or something. Awesome. That, that would be an interesting explanation. So, get Cons, get Theros, get Fate Reforged. Mm -hmm. um, they'll all be fine. I, I didn't check Born of the Gods or Journey into Nyx, but I assume they'll be fine too. Now, where to get foils? Now, I'm going to say something sacrilegious. And... I am a person who generally says, go to your local gaming shop first for everything. However, bulk purchasing foils is probably not what you want. Um, you can probably work out a deal with your, game, your local gaming store, but it probably still won't be as good as you can get online. If you go to, again, I'm not trying to endorse a place, but if you go to like TCG Player, mm -hmm. you can get foils for $0.10 cents a foil, $0.09 cents a foil. You can't beat ten or nine or ten cents a foil. Your local gaming shops are going to want a quarter at the minimum for mm -hmm. their foils. Ours is is a bit more than a quarter for a, for a, a foil. Um, and I'm sure I could have talked to them about buying their whole box, but I don't they think they would have given it to me for ten cents. No, they really because not. not when they're asking seventy five cents That's a foil. Um, so they're not going to give it to me for ten cents a foil. So I do have to say. Get your foils online. Um, I usually got them from one store. Yeah. Um, you go and set one store. You know, pick one that's that's offering ten cent foils. Set them as as your storefront. As your storefront TCG player, and then do a custom search for foil. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually say less than ten cents or less than eleven cents on the advanced search. And then you just and then set your set. Pick cons, pick theros, pick whatever. Pick not dark ascension. Pick apparently. not dark ascension, <laughs> and then it'll start scrolling through. And if they don't, if they have any, it'll pop up right there. It'll show you a price. You can just add them right away and go back to the list. If not, it'll just show a red bar. You know, prices available but without your, you know, filters. That means they don't have any foils cheaper than that. So and just often, keep scrolling. Often, if you get like a really big store, they won't just have like one or two of a given card. They'll have no. Like I was buying 15. seventeen. Yeah. I was buying like seventeen. I bought you know here like heart there's piercer. there's seven heart piercer bows. Um, you know I'm buying things in you know seventeen, eighteen, you know of us of them at a time. Mm -hmm. Now what's really nice is I ordered actually from some companies. The first order I placed was an order for about. 600 foils, 700 foils, and I got the bonus of them being sent in storage boxes. <laughs> nice. I then ordered 400 from another company. I'm not going to name the companies. I, I, they're awesome, but I don't want to like try to... There's storefronts on TCG, right? Their they're, they're, they're storefronts are definitely on TCG Player. They're all people with 50,000 plus sales. Mm -hmm. They are direct TCG suppliers, so they're all, you know... They're good people. Another one sent me the card, you know, my 300 card order in this storage box. So, uh, now you will get some weirdos. I had some like, <laughs> so I ordered uh, twice, about 150 the first time and 200 cards the second time. Um, and both times the storefront, different stores, sent my foils individually penny sleeved. Wow. Don't understand it. I, I, I donated my penny sleeves to my local gaming store. Wow. Because I don't need, you know, 400 penny sleeves, but... Uh, That's a lot of work for them, and a lot of work for you to get them out. So, uh, yeah, I, wow. don't, I, don't, I don't get it, but they, they will. So if you order, like, a couple hundred cards, and, and, and what's great is even when you're ordering these, you know, the cards come, you know, 10 cents plus 49 cents shipping. Mm. Well, that 49 cent shipping counts for your whole order. That's right. So when you get three or 400 cards, they have no choice but to put it in a, a UPS Priority One mail box because that's the only thing cheap enough that will actually hold all your cards <laughs> so that they don't lose money on shipping. Mm -hmm. So you then have a Priority Mail that will actually get your cards here in two days as well. So, you know, buying a bulk bunch of uh, foils has some, has some cool benefits, side benefits, <laughs> nice. as, I, as I found out by ordering several sure. boxes. So, that's foils. You're going to need a lot of them. You're going to need more foils than you think. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to need, you know, the count of your cube. Say, my, like mine, 450. You're going to need those. 
you were going to need land cube, you know, land. Um, for a 10 person cube, I've been told about 30 each is good. I've actually got 32 each in mine. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you, like me, want to be nice, you provide tokens as well. And I've got about 300 tokens in my, in my cube. Um, so that all together is about a thousand, or well, it's nine hundred cards. Well, that's tokens and emblems. And emblems. And you have a, some miscellaneous other cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I'll mention some miscellaneous other cool stuff at some point. Sure. Um, probably during accessories, because tokens are kind of accessories, and we'll talk about accessories at some point. So we'll talk about cool things like tokens and other things at some point. Sure. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> yes. Woo! Next, the next most important thing you're going to want are these. Now again, I'm not trying to endorse a specific brand. I'm not a shill. Um, I just, this is the brand I used. I used a lot of them. Um, I had to actually go to four different suppliers to find enough of them. Mm -hmm. um, that is one drawback to this particular brand. Uh, I kept buying all the suppliers out of stock and the company's website themselves was out of stock. Wow. So they were a little hard to find. Um, the price varies. The price for this pack here is uh <coughs> excuse me you all right varies from uh 5.99 i've seen it on 5.99 on amazon with prime you know two free day, two day shipping mm -hmm. um from that all the way up to 11.99 for that same thing with prime um or even with shipping um i generally bought them at about six like i averaged about 6.99 7.99 with usually about five dollars shipping for buying I usually bought, uh, well the first time I bought them I bought a stack of ten, then I bought another stack of five, um, and then the last two I got from Amazon Prime, so you know, for five bucks a piece. So, so expect to do sticker paper at like six to seven dollars, maybe a little more. And then, yeah, and then, shipping. then some shipping. Shipping, yeah, yeah. Um, these sticker, well and that's for this particular brand. Yes, now, yes. this particular brand is pretty awesome. Um, I have found it to be quite good. It, I mean it might be, there could be better out there. Um, it's, I have been able though to print on these sheets using photo settings and my inkjet printer it was able to absorb enough of that ink now and they look they look pretty good if I could you know if I do say so myself oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there may be there may be some sheets that absorb paper better or ink better um, but I don't know what they are so I can't give you that recommendation there are also sheets that are window decal sheets I have not tried them those don't seem to be uh, as good so Another option you can use if you go to the store, you can find window decals. I have not tried them. Um, I have heard on the internet that they also work fairly well. Um, I'm never, I haven't tried them. Not sure. I like sticker paper. Um, they're very good. Um, the the back of the sticker paper is quite useful. Uh, the only thing I've had a problem with this, other than supply issues, is that uh, I did have to clean my printer um, after running. A bunch of sheets. I mean, I ran a bunch of these sheets through, you know, I don't even know, 50, 100, I don't know, a bunch of the sheets. Yeah, um, I can't even count at this point. Mm. Uh, it gums up the rollers. And so then it makes it difficult for the printer to draw paper. Um, but then you just clean out the, you know, clean the printer, you know, according to your instructions, you know, in manufacturer instructions, and it'll be just fine. Um, so, these sheets, uh, Pretty good. Um, another option people use is uh, pure transparency paper, um, non-sticky paper that they print out on. There are often some of those that can handle ink better than these, so I'm told. However, then you have to ha add in spray adhesive and do you, you know do your own you know adhesion. And you don't have a you know a back to help line things up, and it's it sounded like too much hassle to me. Mm -hmm. So I went with sticker paper. Um, about this pack, the this pack contains eight sheets, eight eight and a half inch sheets. Um, the sheets. Actually, let's open it up and pull a sheet out for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So, here's the sheets. Now it's an unboxing video too. <laughs> yep. Here's the sheets. Shiny. They look white, but they're perfectly transparent. The white is all. The sticker back, you know, we could peel the sticker back, but we don't want to do that. Yeah. We're going to print with this. Mm -hmm. So, these are sheet has eight of them. Um, and if you are using Magic Set Editor, uh, like, like I suggest, um, you will be able to get 72 cards out of a pack. 
mm -hmm. because there are eight card or eight sheets, and you can get nine cards per sheet. Or that's nine normal cards. Uh, yeah. Double face cards, you can only get three double face cards per sheet. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we're when we're talking about designing and printing cards. Um, but you generally get nine per sheet, uh, so you get seventy two per pack. Now, that's that's your best that's your best result. There are times when you're not going to be able to do that. Sometimes, well, it might, it might be just my printer. My printer might just hate me. Your printer might not hate you. I have sent jobs to my printer, uh, setting it to photo settings, and it prints it in normal settings, completely using up a sheet. Mm. Pisses me off. So you may need you again, like foils. You're probably gonna need more sheets than you think. Also. Um, well, now with a new method, I've got a new method we're going to try on camera later. Um, the new method, you might not f*** up as much, but I, being, you know, not as smart as I am now, um, f***ed up a good number of cards. Pardon me. I messed up a good number of cards. I'm going to try to keep this clean. Um, I'll, I'll have, like, the censorship card sure, show up. Sure, that's fantastic. Um, I'm going to try to keep this clean. I'm, I, I have a bad language problem. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I messed up a good number of cards. Um, so I've had, had to use a good number of reprints. Also, I've had some. I changed printers. I literally changed printers from this. You know, I had my first printer died. Um, it tried, but I put it to too much abuse. I mean, the damn thing was older than my kid. My kid's, you know, thirteen. Oh, wow. So, so it deserved its its grave. You know, and I got a much better printer. Um, but it printed in a way that looked like crap. You can actually see it on uh, Jay's seal video that we did. Yeah, um, there's an overlay now. <laughs> oh dear. What what was a card? What was an example of one? So if you look, if, you know, if you look in the cards, they're almost all black. Mm -hmm. um, you'll you'll see these black cards. You'll um, like Grave Titans one. Um, uh, that was definitely one that showed up on camera. Um, oh yeah. So you should be able to see it on Grave Titan. Ophiomancer as well was yep. one, so he was on camera. If you look carefully, um, and you can see when Jay's like going through his sealed deck, mm -hmm. or when he's doing construction, you'll That's see right. cards. You'll see cards where it looks like the sleeve is, is attached to the card. It looks like the card is wet. Um, and that's because my printer had this crazy glossy finish that just... It, it, it looks great. Like, outside of the sleeve, it looks amazing. Um, which you put in the sleeve is then attach the sleeve attaches to it and it looks just absolutely terrible. So I reprinted those. So you're gonna have some of those. So again, you might need more sheets than you want. Um, but like me, you probably want to buy them in small increments. You know, yes, you want to probably buy like ten stacks at once because you're gonna use ten stacks. You know, if they'll let you buy them. You yeah. know, uh, I had to go to two vendors to get. No, my first vendor I actually was able to get ten stacks, mm -hmm. um, but that that sold them out. Um, but you know you're able, you should be able to do that, um, and then you know buy another two. You know, like like for the end here when I was at the end, I had to do that reprint project. I could have bought one pack to do that reprint of the about fifty cards mm -hmm. um, that I had left. But I went no, let's be smart. I, I just found them on Amazon for six bucks with Prime. That's the cheapest I've found them anywhere on the internet. I have issues with supply with these, so I went ahead and bought an extra one. Fair enough. And it turns out that in doing those 50 cards or so, I had the printer f up enough times that I actually had to open this other pack to do the cards we're doing today. <laughs> so, you might want more, more than you want. Plus then, once you get into this whole foil thing, foil proxy thing, you're going to want to make foil proxies for all your decks. Oh, yes. Like for your tokens, yeah, all your tokens are gonna want to be. You're gonna want to make foil proxies for. I was, like I was thinking about making a tiny leader sasses deck this morning. Oh yeah, that looked that I thought looked good. Turns out it's not. No. You know, but fair enough. That's what happens. Um, but you know, I was already thinking about making some foil boar tokens and some foil merfolk tokens. You know, just because I'm all about this foil stuff. So you're gonna want some more sheets. So, uh, anything else about the sheets? Uh, I don't think so. Um, no, I think you. I think you covered that pretty well. Yeah. So that's the sheets. Next. Mm -hmm. Next on consumables. Now we're looking at stuff that's just going to be consumed. Mm -hmm. The first thing we're going to talk about is <laughs> these. Good old cotton swabs. Good old cotton swabs. Um, you love them. You know them. People wrongly put them in their ears. By the way, <laughs> if you do that, stop. If you don't know why, the cotton gets stuck in your ears, gets infected in the wax, 
causes an ear infection, you'll hate life. Don't put cotton swabs in your ears. Put a knife or something in there. That's, <laughs> that's, that's better. <laughs> they put the cap of a pen. Put a, you know. They have those, uh, what are they called? Odor loops? Yeah, those yeah, things. Yeah. Like, those things. You actually use one of those. Don't, don't use those for your ears. Anyway, side note. These are used for the non-ghetto way to <laughs> wipe cards. Um, they are very effective at wiping cards. They're very, excuse me, let me, they're very effective at wiping cards carefully. Mm -hmm. If you want to carefully wipe your cards, can't beat them. If you want to make sure your cards look good, can't beat them. And we're going to talk about how we use them when I get to wiping cards and we'll discuss the good way. Um, however, but. however, there's a big but. Um, money. <laughs> These, if you use just cotton swabs to wipe your cards, you are going to break yourself. Mm -hmm. I got the used 5500 plus another, you know, a box of a thousand basically for ten bucks from Walmart. Yeah. Um, not a bad deal for cotton swabs. I'm not knocking that. It's a great deal for cotton swabs. However, I had done, I don't know, two, about 25 cards or so with cotton swabs alone. And I had gone through, I'm going to guesstimate, 200 cotton swabs. You said 200 at least. At least. Yeah. At least. I mean, I might be over exaggerating. I don't know for sure. All I know is my is my trash can was full yeah. of cotton swabs. Um, so if it was two hundred, you extrapolate that out to your about thousand cards you made. That's eighty dollars at least. At least, so, yeah. Um, on swabs. On swabs. <laughs> so we don't really want to use swabs. You might want to use some swabs for cleanup, and we'll we'll, we'll talk about that when we even, even if you're using the ghettos, they are very yeah. good for cleanup. If you're gonna some... buy that many swabs, buy stock in whatever company. Yeah, is. exactly. <laughs> um, it's just not worth it. You know, it's another reason why we're going ghetto. It's because to go non-ghetto is too much money, and mm -hmm. that includes buying things like cotton swabs. That's right. So, but you probably got enough cotton swabs already to handle the detail work we're gonna use with cotton swabs. So you don't even need to think about going out and buying any. But we're talking about it because. People do use that technique. What we really use instead are these. That is a rag. That is my former t-shirt. That just didn't live any longer. I had no use for it. Um, it had got all that crusty stuff and this is not even good. You know, uh, dead t-shirt, tore it up, free. Mm -hmm. Fantastic wiping tool. Much more efficient, much more useful, much more long-lasting and way cheaper <laughs> than cotton swabs. Tool of choice, I did the vast majority of my cube using a rag. Now you said there's, other than not being quite as precise, there's one other, there's, there's one, one potential thing, issue. Yeah. There's one potential issue, and that's with this particular rag. It's not with rags in general, but You're this right. rag in general, or this this rag in specific. And this ra the, the, that issue is this rag is black. Mm. Now, I am one of those standard IT guys who wears black t-shirts all the time, so all my t-shirts are black. Um, so it kind of is lame. I only have, you know, black ones to show you. I mean, you should but look in my closet. Yeah. Being black is actually bad because it doesn't show where the ink is on the rag. Mm -hmm. Your rag is going to absorb a lot of ink, and it's going to get nasty. And I actually did this with blue, blue shirts that I had, uh, and it was great, because I could see where I'd been with the rag. I could actually use the rag more effectively by coating the rag with ink, mm -hmm. you know, filling in the blank places where the ink's not in the, in the rag by going there. Um, and then going back and forth with the, you know, whatever. It's great. Um, with a black rag, you really can't tell where the ink is. Now, sometimes it, if you're doing like a red card with a bunch of white on it, sometimes you'll see a red and white smear on the rag. But generally you won't. Um, you generally don't know. Like, if we look at this rag, like I've used this rag to wipe about 50 foils and you couldn't tell. No, you either. couldn't tell. Well, there you go. If you look carefully here, you can see some some ink. And but, if you didn't know what you're looking at, that doesn't look like ink to me, to right, be honest. Yeah. Right. I only know because I, you know, well, I did it and I watched it and I've yeah. looked at enough wiped ink to, to, to know. Um, so, not the best. If you're going to tear up a shirt, if you have the option, tear up an old white one. Mm -hmm. I should have torn this one up, but however, when I got to the point of using this one, um, I only had, you know, just a handful of cards left and it that's actually a shirt that's not technically in the uh, rags pile yet. So I didn't just want to sacrifice it for the greater cause, but you know, I probably should have. You know, because it's just much, it's just much easier to use um, than, than using, using a dark rag. Um, but again, a dark rag will work. It's just, it's much easier when you can see where the ink is. Mm -hmm. So, 
rags. You're going to need them. You're going to need a lot of them. Um, I mean, admittedly, this this shirt would probably produce enough rags to do you know a thousand cards or so. So should should yeah. Should. So that's rags. Um, next, we need a way to get the ink off of the foils. And that's acetone. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. Now, again, not trying to, you know, brands don't care, you know. I just well, happen to go there because that's where I happen to go. What you care about. What is I do that care about right is there. this right here. <laughs> now, many of you know, or this is the acetone. And this is what we're going to use to wipe the ink off the foils. Now, many people know that uh, nail polish remover is made out of acetone, but it's not complete acetone. If you go to, you know, your grocery store or whatever, you're going to want to find 100% acetone. It has to be 100% acetone. Alright? So you're going to want a bottle. This is a 16 ounce bottle. It like, cost me like four bucks, something like that. Uh, pretty useful. Uh, it's a very handy size. Um, as you see, or as you'll see when we get to wiping foils, um, and, and in fact even in cutting and trimming, um, we're going to want a bottle about this size because we're going to want to... Where is it? Aha! No. Oh dear. What is the it? The cup and holes. That's there. That, yeah, there we go. Just start over with you're going to want to. So, as you're cutting, or as you're wiping, you're going to want to use just a little bit at a time. You're going to want to use a little cup like this, you know, just a small little plastic container. And I'm, well, we're going to pour and you'll see how much at the time. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to want a little bit. And so we're going to want a small bottle. Also, uh, there are times when we're just going to want to wet our, you know, dampen our rag with acetone, um, just a little bit, and you know, and so we're going to want a bottle that we can easily grab the rag and do that. Okay, so we're going to want a small bottle like this. However, this small bottle will only do. I wish I'd been paying attention when I did this. <laughs> a couple hundred cards, a few hundred cards, something like that. Um, yeah, and if you had to buy a new bottle for that each time, you'd be you'd be spending a good bit. bit. Oh yeah, we do have a solution though. Oh yes, the solution. Dun dun dun. Is this. this is a gallon of acetone. Again, not don't care about the brand. In fact, as far as acetone's concerned, brand doesn't really matter because again, you're buying 100 percent acetone. Yeah. You know, acetone doesn't change between people. It's a chemical. Yeah. So, get 100 percent acetone. You go to your hardware store, um, you know, any of your local hardware stores, they will have this, and this will be about 16 bucks, 17 bucks, something like that. And you'll get a gallon of acetone. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to want to do, do that. Now these things are very, especially when full, un unwieldy to use. They have caps that are annoying. I had to actually open mine with the pliers. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to be messing with this all the time. You were also saying you can't really ever be sure, at least with this kind, if it's completely closed or if not. If it's completely closed. So we don't want to try to tilt it like that, because no. it could, or tilt it like that, because it could actually drip out, you know. They're not great. Um, you do want to keep the cap on, though, because acetone likes to evaporate very easily. So if you don't leave the cap on, you'll come back and you'll have an empty bottle of acetone. Mm. So to solve this problem, we still use our small bottle. When our small bottle becomes empty, enter funnel. Ta-da! Just pour from here into there. Convenience. I know it's probably obvious to most people, but we're going to say it for the people who it's not obvious for. So fill this bottle up. Go on about your business. Mm -hmm. Things are awesome in the acetone world. Now one last thing we've got. While you're wiping foils with the acetone, you are going to want a convenient surface to do it on. Now me, I like to sit back and watch TV while doing it. It takes a while, you know, mm -hmm. it takes hours. I would do it for hours. So I'd be sitting on my bed watching TV with this in my lap, pressed up against my leg. You know, so it's a hard surface for me to just to wipe foils on. Now, this is semi-consumable because whatever you use will be damaged. If you look, there is black everywhere on the edge. That is ink. You are going to wipe ink off onto whatever you use as your little stand. Now, yes, you could probably use the acetone to clean it up. That's your business. I just used something I didn't care if it got messed up. You know, this is just a Tupperware lid. You know, the ink's not going to mess the Tupperware lid back up when I put it back in the closet, you know, back in the kitchen. It's going to be just fine. 
you know, I didn't use this side where the food is, so this is, you know, just fine. So you're going to want to find some hard surface that'll, you know, you can set in your lab to make it easy to, to wipe foils. Um, I mean, yes, you can set your desk and do it or whatever. But again, if you set your desk, you want to put something down there, like newspaper or something, because whatever surface you use is going to get messed up. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, that's all the consumables we have. Now, there's a couple, or there's a few um, long-lasting, durable tools we want to talk about, so we'll get to those now. All right. All right. Durable tools. The first durable tool you're going to want is a guillotine paper cutter. Now many of you have paper cutters, many of you are thinking I could just use scissors. You're both wrong. Um, that's not just my opinion, that's just a fact. You're wrong. Um, a guillotine paper cutter is the way to go. Uh, first, if you try to use scissors, you're just going to hate life. You cannot cut straight lines with scissors and you're cutting out a thousand cards. You're just going to hate life. Mm. Don't do it. You're not going to want it. Um, you're going to want something you can cut straight lines. Next. If you try to use one of those little roller things, I guess they do for paper. I don't like them. I really don't like them. Um, they push the paper around. Yes, you can hold them steady, but whatever. We're trying to cut through thick cards mm -hmm. and thick sticky. plastic sticky sheets, sticker sheets. Those rollers just aren't going to cut it. They're going to grab and they're going to tear and they're going to, they're just don't. Don't even try. Get yourself a guillotine paper cutter. It's, it's, it's an investment that's worth every penny. Now. Um, one of the reasons you want to, you know, more reasons you want is because you're going to, the only way you're going to guarantee straight lines on your cards well, is to use one of these. All of the other methods are going to lead to jagged edges. Uh, and that's because we've got the sticky plastic and the thick card. You really need to step it up to get something powerful enough to cut through them. Now, if you use a guillotine, and you've got it, you, you use a quality guillotine. Now you can get one of these for like 25 bucks. I tried one for 25 bucks. I returned it the next day. Um, it just wasn't, it just couldn't cut straight. It, the paper kept, you know, it kept tugging the cards. It wouldn't cut quickly, wouldn't cut cleanly. So you really do need to want to put a little bit of money into this too. Um, but it's going to be a tool that's going to last. Now, uh, again, not a shill for Fiskars. Um, this particular model, it's out of this world awesome. Mm -hmm. I am in love with this cutter. I have cut my entire cube with it, and it is out of this world fantastic. It, uh, just give, I'll give you a quick review of this particular cutter because it's very good, and I'll tell you about some of the things you want to look for in a cutter. Uh, first thing is the blade. The blade is very thick, very solid. It's self-sharpening, uh, and it's hardened steel. Uh, it's perfect. It cuts cleanly. It cuts straight. It cuts without tearing, without pulling, and it cuts straight through the card, straight through the sticky, perfect. Now there are some instances where it stops being perfect, but we're going to talk about that in trimming. So we'll discuss that. Um, the next awesome thing about this is this little contraption mm -hmm. here. Now this particular, this is, this is particular to this particular model. Uh, most of them don't have this, but this is something that this one has. Now this is an automatic little arm that comes down and holds your paper steady for you. Now, it doesn't hold it perfectly tightly, but it holds it mostly in place, in place enough that you can, you know, get it lined up and then step away and it's going to basically stay there. And then when you cut, a little bit of pressure here makes for a perfect cut. Now, I'm not actually going to cut this paper because I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, so this arm, quite useful for holding the sheets in place while we're cutting them. Uh, we'll see that. Uh, it's great for making sure we have nice straight cuts. Um, it is a drawback when you're trying to cut little stuff. If you're trying to cut something that's like that wide, maybe that wide, you know, can you see that? There we go. Yeah, yeah. You if you see something like that wide, you know, you know, something small, um, then it's not going to do any good because you're going to be trying to hold it with your finger here, your thumb underneath the arm, and it's going to get in the way. It, that is a pain. Um, but everything else is fantastic. Um, I wish there was a way to disable it, you know, for those instances where I don't need it. Um, haven't figured it out yet because I haven't, I didn't want to mess up my cutter. Um, and it's, it hasn't been enough of an issue to deal with it. Um, it's a fantastic cutter. I love it. Uh, cut straight, cut quick. You need to get one. Plain and simple. Not necessarily this brand. Um, I highly recommend it. I have nothing bad to say about this brand. The, 
the base is solid wood, it's bamboo, good solid construction, mm -hmm. uh, nice little handle, built-in uh, built ruler. Uh, note that this, this coloration is not from the factory, that is ink from cutting sh on the cutting stuff on this board. <laughs> 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 Um, from cutting stuff on this board. Uh, so, fantastic product. Uh, cuts very square. Um, though you'll find we don't actually use the square edge for cutting. Uh, and you'll see why. Uh, it's actually kind of strange. But you'll see why. Uh, so that's this thing. Very, very useful. Uh, did I forget anything that I mentioned before? Uh, no, you, you, wasn't there some sort oh, of tool? there is a, there is. Aha. Also, if you get this particular model, um, it comes with this little thing here that you can use. Let me loosen this thing up. All right. You can use it to find where on the measurement you want, lock it down, and then you've got a nice clean edge to, to lock paper up against so that you've got a perfectly measured out area if you're going to do like a bunch of cards or well, a bunch of like greeting cards or whatever they're exactly the same size perfect for that um, I find that this thing has gotten in my way so I took it off and threw it on my desk um, but it is cool it is, it is nice that you get it um, mm -hmm. so guillotine cutter again try to use scissors you're going to hate life <laughs> um, you try to use one of those rolly things you're going to screw up your sheets and you're going to cost yourself money Mm -hmm. And in fact, you're going to cost yourself over the long in, in buying replacement blades because your blades are going to get sticky on those roller things. And replacing those blades is annoying. You can't really clean those blades very well. So in replacement blades, screwed up sheets, you're gonna you're gonna cut, spend less than this. Now this was about fifty to sixty dollars, I think, somewhere around there. Um, worth it every penny. Um, it's going to last forever. Um, it has almost no flaws. I can't recommend it enough. Um, I can't recommend it enough. So, but, and I can't recommend guillotine cutters, period, enough. You gotta have one. I mean, that's just, a, that you just got to. It's just the only thing that's gonna work. So, now, in doing, using these cutters, the next thing you're gonna want in your area is to be sure and have adequate lighting. Adequate lighting is very important. So, one of the one of the important things that I do is I use one of these. My table side lamp that's got an adjustable head, stick it wherever. So I often stick, stick it right here on the end, turn it on, and then I pull it over on the side and shine it on an angle. Mm -hmm. That allows me, when I'm trimming, to see exactly the ed get light on the side where the blade is. You know, underneath the blade, you know, often the light, this blade is big and thick. So it can create some shadows down here. So you're gonna want a light that fully illuminates this section over here. Um, when we trim cards and anything from above, we're gonna want light on, shining from above. And I, I really recommend getting one of these bendy lights because you can get the light to be exactly where you want to do it. Now, when we cut paper, we actually don't use the bendy light at all. That's for cutting, that's when we're trimming cards. The other thing you're gonna want for light is actually these pair of flashlights. Now, we're going to see how they work later because I want to be a bit of a surprise, but you're going to want to get preferably a pair of uh, LED flashlights, preferably, ones that are nice and bright um, and that are also fairly small um, so that as you can see that they're like about lower than than the width of the, or the height of the, uh, the cutter. So that they sit underneath the cutter. Um, this one's a little thick. Well, uh, no, no, I guess it's actually less than a two. So you're gonna want two bright LED flashlights and we're gonna see how we use them later. I think that covers physical materials. Now we're gonna talk about the two digital projects I products I used to make this project happen. Oh, and then there's one more tool. We forgot <laughs> the much maligned scissors. Like I said, if you use scissors, you're gonna hate life, but as we'll find out, we can't actually complete our project without them. So you're gonna need a decent pair of scissors. These are just, you know, your standard scissors. You don't have to get any special ones. If you have special scissors, they'll be good, but one thing you're gonna want, want to be aware of is they are gonna get sticky. Mm -hmm. So if you have extra special scissors, you might not want to do that, because it might dull them. 
So just your standard paper scissors are perfect. All right, thanks. All right, now we're going to look at the two digital pro you know, digital tools we need to use to create this program. The first is Magic Set Editor. As we can see on the screen here, this is Magic Set Editor. Uh, the address is up here. Uh, I assume that Jay will also put this in the description of the video. Absolutely, and this is completely free, right? Completely free, completely open source, um, completely legal to use. However, the guys that make it are actually kind of frowning on what we're doing with it. They kind of prefer us not to make proxies with them. They don't want to advocate uh, counterfeiting cards. Like we said in the disclaimer, don't sell them, don't use the cards in sanctioned events. Yeah. You know, that's their main concern. And granted, the way that you're doing this, the cards don't look anything like... Right, and that's yeah. another thing is, when we, when we develop with this, the, the, the program we're using actually makes it difficult to make exact copies of cards anyway. Mm -hmm. So it'll actually be pretty easy for people to tell that the card you're looking at is not an exact actual card. And that's in addition to the card being thicker than a that's, that's in addition to it being a thick foil, you know, it's yeah. obvious it's not a card in right. these proxies. Um, but again, they, they kind of frown on us making proxies. Um, they like, they, 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 they're perfectly happy for people to use it to make tokens. Um, it's primarily here to make custom cards. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to go against their wishes and be bad people and use it to make proxies. Now, uh, they do have downloads for Windows primarily. That's the most stable one. That's the one I use. I, I'm a Mac guy myself. I primarily use one on, on you know, things on Mac. Uh, secondary, I prefer Linux. I usually prefer Windows just to game. However, mm. Magic Senator works on Windows and it works really well. Um, and currently their Linux version isn't f***ing working. Isn't working. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get better. I promise. I love how it says, has not been functional for a good while. <laughs> yeah. So, really, you just want to use this on Windows. Um, sorry Mac users. You know... I actually do a lot of my work with a. I did a lot of my work for the cube with a Mac sitting right next to me as a secondary source. Yeah. Um, do you know if like Boot Camp helps with that? Boot Camp, yeah, you could run this in Boot Camp. You could run this in a in a virtual box. It'll run just fine if you if you put a if you use virtual box to create a, a Windows 8 um, image or a Windows 7 image or a, even a Windows 95 image. Well, not, not, not 95. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not 95. I kid. No, I kid. But you know, an XP or you know, you make an XP image, or you make a uh, a Windows 7 or 8 image and mm -hmm. run it in either Boot Camp or run it in uh, VirtualBox. That's how I run it is in VirtualBox. Um, it'll run just fine on Mac that way. Um, you're absolutely right. Thank you, Jay. No, no problem. Um, so this is the program we want. Downloads easy. You know, you just download here. Well, downloads supposedly easy. However. It's a, it's a, uh, oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Click here. Now, oh, right. So, we come to this page. Now, source boards used to be one of the best places to download software, especially open source software. They have become completely scummy. Warning when you go to source boards, you got to be careful what you click. Mm -hmm. If you look on this page, we cancel out this window that popped up automatically. Now, that's the one you want, it's the one that pops up automatically. However, if we look here, we've got one, two, three, four, at least four things without scrolling that look like there's some more um, that look like they could be our download link. They're not, and almost all of them contain a little bit of spyware right. on the edge of mal you know, on the line of being out, out and out malware. So you want this link here. You know, mm -hmm. if it doesn't get there, there's a direct link right here. Click that. Don't click any of the rest of this crap. This is what I see with AdBlock installed. Yeah. So, AdBlock's not going to save you. Just let the automatic thing happen. If it doesn't, because you got JavaScript blocking or whatever, there's a direct link right here. Click that one. Okay? Um, now, doing that will get you the main program. You know what? Screw it. That's fine. <laughs> oh, well. We, hopefully that glare's not too much for y'all. We try to... Try, yeah. We tried to solve it, but... Thankfully, the time of day has gone... Yeah, for, yeah. Know, it's, it's better now. Fortunately, the sun goes down yes. over behind the trees very quickly. We've only got about another 20 minutes or so before the sun will be completely gone. We're going to have to worry about that. So hopefully the glare won't be too bad for the next little bit. All right. And, you know, most of this you don't really need to see super well anyway because we're going to have links in the description. Mm -hmm. um, so you just need to really listen. 
And uh, so this will install it. It'll install most of the most of the templates you'll need. Now, there are a large number of templates that are not automatically included. Now, some of these include things like the M15 card frame. Now, yeah, if you're not familiar, the M15 card frame looks like looks like this. It's got this, you know, where the colored border comes down and stops. It's got that edge. It's got the nice clean lines down here. That that card frame is not available on the default. Now, if you're me, good. I personally hate the M15 card frame. Wizards, you're should, not alone to be wizards honest. Wizards should go kill themselves for <laughs> changing the card frame. The modern card frame is the best. Long live the modern card frame. And we'll talk about. We'll we'll see this again when we get to designing cards. There's a, a little, little OCD I have. I see it's thin at the top and thick at the bottom and that lack of balance gets me. The lack me. of balance, I don't like the way it, it stops just, just short of the bottom. I don't like the red part. I, don't, I just don't like it. I think it's ugly. Mm. Wizards made a mistake with the M15 card frame. Now, I do kind of like the M15 token frame. If we look at an M15 token, yeah. um, you know, well that's not a good choice. <laughs> Slip. If we look at okay, if we look we at an M15 card frame, I like the fact that it's no longer a oval on the bottom, mm. and so we get more art. That's right. But we do still have that same broken border. And now they're graph telling you like. it's a token creature. You didn't know that before. Well, that's good. That's good. Token should actually be a super type. And I have actually, as a note, made all tokens in my cube have the keyword token to denote that they are token creatures. Now there are game rule mechanics that refer to token creatures. Yeah, yeah. So having the word token on there is actually good. But I mean, if you see that the card and it just says creature, soldier, and nothing else, I guess I guess maybe somebody would not... Somebody would, might not, and, maybe not, but it's still a token. And yeah, we won't, you know, right. Token should be added as a super type to the comprehensive rules. Mm -hmm. Period. Um, there are rules that reference tokens. You know, it is a type. They're basically getting, they're basically preparing us for making token a proper super type, is my opinion. All right. So, um, but anyway, back to the frames. I hate M15 frames. <laughs> um, they're ugly. If you like them, you're wrong. And <laughs> if you like them and want them, you can actually get them. Um, to do that, we come here to this, to this, uh, the MSC's forums, and this specific page, this is uh, template index. Now this guy here, Pichoro, he's an admin of the forums and I don't know if he writes, if he wrote the program, but he definitely writes most of the templates. Um, he also, he's one of the guys that really doesn't like you making things or making proxies with it, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry Pichoro, you do amazing work, I appreciate all your work, I'm still going to make proxies with it. Um, so, at first, he's got a whole bunch of questions, like any questions that you want about installing Magic Set Editor, or most importantly, these extra templates are answered up here. But if you scroll down, past this, past this, you'll come down here to the next page, post. And here, we've got a whole bunch of extra templates. So we've got translations, which, if you speak other languages, go ahead, they're right there. But there are also packs. Can you go up to the languages and see what all is available? Since sure. Since there's a show Whoa, okay. There you go. Okay. So it's got quite a number of languages you could translate the game into. Mm -hmm. Or not the game into, into the, the, the program into. Yeah. Um, so there's that, if you need it. Um, I speak English, so I skipped over it. Mm -hmm. um, pardon my ethnocentric. No, no, no. It's a, I mean, we are <laughs> speaking English in the video, so... Yeah, yeah. so it makes it a little um, tricky as we otherwise. scroll down, we'll see that we've got some, some new individual packs. Um, some of these you might want, you know, if you want the new enchantment tokens, if you want the, the, the background to be sparkly, you know, like the borders yeah. to be sparkly, you need to install that. If you want the God's frame to be sparkly like the God's frame is, mm -hmm. you need to install that. If you don't, what you do need to do is this one. This one right here, Magic's recently printed styles, you need to install this. Because mm -hmm. in here we got conspiracy cards, M15 cards, M15 planeswalkers, Promos, tokens, well, all the M15 stuff. And in modern cards, um, it's an update to the modern frame, which is good, because that's the one we're going to, well, I recommend you use, because it looks better. This also gives you Planeswalker's four abilities, so if you wanted to proxy, say, Jace the Mind Sculptor, or Omnixilus of the, the uh, Black Oath, one of the new yeah. commanders, or one that's of the right. Planeswalkers that can be commander, you need a four-line commander. 
to get a four line, or not commander, four line planeswalker. To get one, you need to use this template. Furthermore, in here, um, we've got some clear planeswalkers. So if you had a, had one like a Eldrazi, and one a clear border, you need those there. But next, a really important one: emblems. If you want to do emblems, emblems are in this pack. And the last one that's in here that's important. Oh, so there's those and gods and those and those are important um, if you want them. But the next thing is you do want this. Uh, you skip this one, but this one here has some things that are also missing, like that are important. Miracles, if you want ah. miracle frames, are in here. You want split cards, they're in here. Um, few split cards are in here, but the most important ones that are in here for That's me are these. Well, not only modern double face planeswalkers for your Garrett Railcurst. But these modern double face cards. So if you want double face cards, you need to put, get this pack. Also, if you want levelers, you need to get this pack. Mm -hmm. You want Zendikar textless lambs that look gorgeous. Absolutely, jeez, snow covered full art. Get on that, wizards. Get on that. You need this pack. So there are other packs, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but you really need, if you're going to install this, you're going to want this pack right here, the Magic Printed Modern Styles, and then the Magic Recently Printed Styles. Mm -hmm. Install both of those packs. Now, doing so is easy. Click these, they go to a Source Forge page. Again, don't click any of these ugly buttons. Just let it, just let it download, and then you just open it up. You, magic Set Editor should have already uh, associated itself with the file type yeah. that this kind is. And it'll automatically open with Magic Set Editor. In fact, I'll do it. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt my Magic Set Editor. We'll do it. It should open real quick. Uh, are you sure that your ad block is on? Because the, the symbol seems to be... Oh, my ad block is turned off. That's why we see all this... Oh, Thank you. okay. I was wondering about that. Like, sometimes I'll do that when I'm on YouTube and I see, like, someone I really like to... Thank you, Jay! Oh, no problem. Tolarian Community College. I'll, yes. I'll, yeah. Uh, anyway, so... Ta-da! Ta -da. So, you actually, if you have Adblock, it's, it's actually much, it's, it should look like it should, <laughs> I expect it. Thank you, Jay. Woo! Um, I don't use this as my primary browser, you know, this is my gaming computer. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. I don't really do much surfing on it. So, thank you, Jay. So, again, to download it, it'll pop up Magic Set Editor, which is this, it'll pop up this window, mm -hmm. which will be this package manager. Now, this is where you've got all of the different templates that you can choose. Um, I, you can go through, like if this is conspiracy, you can click to reinstall or remove or change or install specific ones. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you just go to, I think if you can do just game files here, one of them lets you install basically all at once. Oh, wow. um, because I've already got them all installed and they're already set to reinstall, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's, it's really obvious when you do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, if not, you know, just go to each one that you're interested in and click install. It's pretty straightforward. Um, installing over the ones that are there is perfectly fine. Um, generally, you should install. What you should do though is, if we go back, um, we should install this one first because there are some minor updates in this one to to, to templates that are in this one. So install this one first, and then it'll get updated with this one. Now the templates do have are do have built in like version checking, so if you do them backwards, it'll catch it. But you might as well do it in the right order, just because. Mm -hmm. So that's Magic Set Editor. Um, we'll discuss how to use it when we get there, when we get to design cards. But that's how to install it. What you need, you need to get those. Definitely get these packs. Um, and again, we will have this link as well in the description, Jay. All right, absolutely. So next, the other program we use or I used, was the GIMP. Bring out the GIMP. <laughs> now GIMP, if you're not aware, is a free open source GIMP Photoshop. Uh, it can't do everything the Photoshop can do. It's not as elegant. Um, however, it's free. Mm -hmm. It's open source. Um, open source is good. Oh yes. Um, 
And it's multi-platform. Whatever platform you're on, you can get the GIMP for it. Windows, Linux, or Mac. It all works. It's all good. Um, now, it's not as powerful as Photoshop. If you have access to Photoshop legally, do not go pirate Photoshop. That's bad. If you have access to Photoshop, I highly recommend you use Photoshop instead. Um, but if you don't have access to Photoshop and you need a free access, you know, a Photoshop tool, use the GIMP. Highly recommended. And again, simple, straightforward installation pro process. You go to the GIMP's page, GIMP.org, click the download button, and I think it's, yeah, just click this button here. It should, I think this page is, yeah, this page will detect your operating system. And so it should automatically put you just a big download button. Click that, click open, click step through. You know, the options are, you know, there's no malware with it because um, it's open source and good stuff. So just install it straightforward and we'll discuss how we use it later. There we go. I don't think we need to turn the camera off. So, now that we've discussed all of our tools, the next thing we're going we're to move into uh, the next important topic. The next important topic we want to discuss is choosing your cube. Mm -hmm. Now, there are lots of things to consider in choosing a cube. I am new to the cube world. I am not an expert in what you should do for your cube. However, I am a small expert in reading the internet. <laughs> and I can do that very well. And I assume you can too. And so here's how you can help choose what's in your cube and help determine not only the contents of your cube, but how many lands you need, um, do you what size you want, do you want a 360 cube, a 450, do you want a... That's the first question. Mm -hmm. um, the first question is size, usually how big, and that's how many people you want to be able to draft with. Um, the next question you want is, to a answer is probably powered or not. Um, or even for that matter, what Or even just what you flavor yeah. you want your cube to be is actually probably better. Mm. And then after you decide the flavor, you probably want to ask what uh, form, you know, format. Like, like whether it's a legacy cube, a modern cube, you know, a vintage cube, like a vintage powered cube like mine. You know, you probably want to ask that question then. Um, but that can all be very overwhelming. I know it was for me a bit when I decided to be a cube. And, but there was something I did know, and I bet a lot of you are the same way, that you did know one thing when you were set out to do the cube. You know, you basically have an idea of, I want a cube that does this general thing. For me, I wanted to play with power. <laughs> I, never haven't, I, I miss playing with power, and I'm not going to go spend the money for power. Um, I watched people draft the Holiday Cube on MTGO and was like, that looks awesome. I want to be some of that. So that was my decision is I wanted power. However, that doesn't help me make a good decision about what needs to be in my cube. Mm. So to help me answer that, I went to three really important resources and I recommend you do so as well. And again, links in the comment or links in the description. The first is this one, cubetutor.com. Mm -hmm. CubeTutor.com is a site where cube aficionados can upload their cubes and in fact can completely specify what their cube is to, you know, to what set and whether it's foiled and, you know, promo or and all kinds of fun things like that. So you can pimp it out, track your pimping of your cube. <laughs> um, but this is a fantastic site. Uh, not only does it list cubes, it lists them in a very easy to digest way. You know, he's got his a little bit... Uh, I don't have mine with these extra highlighting, but it does break it down by sections of the cube. You know, you'll find that most people, when they develop a cube, try to balance it amongst colors uh, and colorless and multicolored to a general extent. So it yeah. looks like he has a key, and that's why he's he, they. So, like for example, if it's red, oh. it's missing, and sure, yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. So that's a cool feature. I did not know what I could do on on my cube. That, um, in fact, let me. Uh, can I, am I already signed in? We'll go to my cube. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, aha. So actually, here we are at my cube. We'll look at my cube. Um, just so I spent like an hour just on yours, and I spent like four hours just browsing this site. Right. right. So here we are. Wow. Yes. You know, it's divided into you know to the different sections of the colors very easily, and then it divides into you know what 
the types are. Like we got creatures here, planeswalkers, etc. And then what's even better is these are sorted by converted mana cost, and then alphabetical. And you can hover over them, and you get. Then this is not a plugin I've got. This is not auto card anywhere. This is the site. Um, the site does all the card images for us, and it also has a bunch of other cool things on here. We can draft. We can do a simulated draft. We can see just a simple sample pack. We can even do seal drafting. We can open like six booster packs and, you know, pull out a deck. We can even save it. We can do some analysis to see what our color balance is. We got a bunch of cool things here. Um, what's even better, what's cool though, is not only can we do that for our cubes, but if we go here to the community, there are large lists of popular cubes. Right, these are just the popular cubes where we can find what you're looking for. We can even do, there's a search somewhere, I think. Yeah, search. We can even search and find individual cards, um, sizes. Um, I thought that it allowed like, the checkboxes like powered and whatnot, but we, we, you can easily see those things here mm -hmm. in the properties. And those you don't have to set. Those it actually determines, it, it actually detects it based on what's in your cube. Right. Uh, which is pretty nice. So, um, if anyone's curious, my cube is basically this cube um, with minor addition or minor remove changes to the colorless. Um, he has some man lands for, or not colorless to the to the uh, color multicolored here. He's got some man lands like the stomping ground. You know, Gruel gets stomping ground, but if we come down here to poor Boros. They, instead of a stomping ground, they get a battlefield forge. Oh, they Is have it... a, a sacred foundry, though. They're both shock lands. Hmm? Uh, they, so, stomping ground... Not stomping ground. I didn't mean stomping ground. I'm sorry. Please excuse me. I'm talking about the... the <laughs> oh, the raging, the raging ravine. ravine. I meant to say raging ravine. My brain said raging ravine, and I said stomping ground. Yeah, I... Please don't... come back. Now, <laughs> back to my rank. Yeah. Barul gets a raging ravine. Yeah. Right? It gets a man land. We come down here to say Boros, it gets a battlefield. They don't even get a Slayer Stronghold, jeez, or no. anything like that. No, they get a battlefield forge. Half of the guilds get pain lands in that slot. Half of them get man lands. Well, four of them get man lands, and Selesnia gets this lame draw land. Uh, well, it's not lame. It's a cool land. I mean, I'm not knocking it. Um, it's not a man land, though. Yeah. But it is better than a pain land. So it's not cool that half the guilds get a better land, than, and the other lands that the, the guilds get are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The duels, the shocks, and the uh, fetches. Um, so to balance the lands, I was like, screw those bastards. You know, Creeping Tarpit's awesome. I love the card. You know, I'm a Demir Mage. I, I wish I wish Worldwake did the cycle for all the guilds. If, if, there were, if there was a man land for all the guilds, I'd put them in. Absolutely, yeah. However, because there's not, I axed the man lands and gave everybody pain lands. Yeah. So, but otherwise, it's basically this guy's cube. Um, otherwise, it's the same. But there are a lot of cubes to check out here. So, if you want to look at cubes, here's a good place. Now, if you want to read about cubes and general cubing, cubing information, it's hard to beat the the Reddit sub or the the MTG cube subreddit. Um, I don't know if you're all redditors. Reddit's an amazing site. Mm -hmm. um, check it out if you're not. Well if you're willing to give up your life to a website. <laughs> um, I am a Redditor for like eight years. Like I have, I, well actually no, Am I get, did I get my nine year badge? Oh wow. Da, 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 da. Yeah, there we go. And let's see, let's go to my account. I'm just curious to see if I have, I probably shouldn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the nine year club. So, da, 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 da. yeah, believe it or not, I'm in the nine year club. I, I actually was on Reddit like five months after the the Y Combinator um, launch of the site. Um, big wow. fan, give up your life to it. It's a great site. Um, if you want to learn about magic, if you want to learn about any particular thing, if you're into anything, there's a subreddit for it. Mm -hmm. um, that's like anything. Um, really anything. <laughs> um, anyway, if you want to learn about cubes, come here. We've got on the sideboard, there's a bunch of cube philosophy and rhetoric, or info over here, some podcast links, some blog links, some articles some popular cubes that people have, some forum links, you know, the holiday cube. There's a bunch of great links on the side of here. If you got questions, post a link over here. Um, people are really helpful. Um, if you want to uh, 
get support for your cube. They recommend you use Cube Tutor if you're going to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, submit them as self links so you don't get any karma. If you don't know about karma, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just submit them as self links. Um, put the link in the company in your like comment. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Things like cube talking about cube bolts. That's a storage device. Uh, we, we might talk about that kind of stuff in accessorizing later. Um, so come here. Great place to get information. The last place you want to get information is MTG Salvation's forum, Cube Forum. Um, in here, there is a huge uh, sub forum just to cube lists. I mean, it is long. Um, and in fact, this is also where I found if you can find like my cube. Here it is. It's you know WTWLF123. He's actually got a, a a sticky cube because it is one of the most popular cubes, mm -hmm. and he has a very long breakdown for what's in this cube, for his philosophy of it, his basic information, philosophies, you know, cards that aren't in it, you know, things like that, you know, and, and here's where the card. Well, that's his philosophy. Oh, he's also written a bunch of articles. Um, you should actually come to this guy's page anyway um, and read this because he's got some. You know, not only is this good about his philosophy about his cube design, but about cube design and philosophy in general. Um, and this article is awesome. It's really good. Uh, Building Manibase of TV was a really good article. Uh, should should check it out. Um, good stuff. Um, and then of course it's, you know, here's his cube broken down by sections. Um, even with summaries, you know, what's good in it, what's the top cards, you know. Good stuff. Um, admittedly, he's the cream of the crop for postings in the forum, mm -hmm. um, but you can find other quality cubes like this here. Also, in this forum, any question that you could possibly want to know is probably better asked, and you can find it. Um, pauper and peasant cubes. I'm thinking about a pauper cube. Uh, this one wouldn't be foil proxies that actually make a pauper cube because it's pauper. pauper. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Another good place. So, um, when we're talking about choosing a cube, it's a big subject. Uh, don't be afraid to be overwhelmed at first. Um, just go with what your gut is of what you're thinking you want to do. Like, I want to play with power. Once you know you want to play with power, you can come to one of these three places and you can find some resources that will point you in the direction to find some nice, balanced, quote unquote, balanced uh, cubes that will have some fun in the direction you want. Now that's not to say you can't go and build your own cube by yourself without any guidance. More power to you. Um, I'm just saying there's a bunch of resources out there for those who want them. And with that, nice. Um, I believe we're going to move into creating cards with Magic Set Editor. All right. So now we're going to create some cards with Magic Set Editor. Now we're going to be creating a lot of cards. So one thing I recommend is that. And if you have Windows, uh, I believe this is 7, you get this nice option to automatically just open the sets that you've got to divide your sets into your color sections. Um, having all 450-ish cards, you know, a lot more if you're doing tokens and lands, which I really recommend you do the lands. Mm -hmm. um, let me just address that right now. I fully recommend that you don't use regular basic lands. Um, because your everything else is going to be foil proxy in your cube, you would easily be able to tell that the other cards were just regular basic lands because the cards are much, much thicker uh, when they come out foil proxy. So we're going to want to do lands too. Um, but if you have them all, all 450-ish, you know, 500 cards in one set, it's kind of hard to manage. Um, so I broke mine into color, made it a lot easier. Um, I've actually even also got a reprint and a print section, and we'll talk about what those are for when we get to printing. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up Colorless, uh, because we're going to create a colorless card today. Um, and in fact, let's take a little detour into what we're going to create today, because I'm going to actually create some cards for my cube. You, you know, my cube is done, um, and I've got tokens for everything in my cube, but there's actually, there's actually something I found out about that I, I want to add to my cube. So let's discuss it. It's pretty cool. Uh, you guys might not have heard about it. That's not the right window. Give me a second. Um, and that's this right here. There is a format for cube for two players called Micro Sealed. And it looks just flat awesome. Mm. It looks like a deck builder's dream. Um, 
we'll put a, you know links and all that. Uh, this thing looks awesome. You basically take a chunk of your cube. I don't remember how much it is. Like 90 random non-land cube cards. You know, which... That's a small section, but it's cool. Uh, and that's each player. So basically you get uh, two sets of booster packs to work with. You know, like if you were doing a normal draft, you get a set of three booster packs. You get two of those. I mean, basically you get a sealed pool. Uh, you don't look at it. Well, you do look at it, but you get six copies of each basic land, and then these following non-basics. You know, two of those and two of these. Now, I've already created, I believe, the brass burn wheels. Yes. Um, I haven't printed them out. We're already printing those today. Um, but I've created the card in the editor, but I have not created the Evolving Wilds card. And so that's what we'll be doing well, today. Well, that's uh, Evolved. Or, excuse me, not Evolving. It's the Evolved Wilds card. I guess the difference here is that this one does not come in tap. That's exactly correct. Ah, okay. That's exactly correct. Um, now these are special cards. They, you know, that that have an aspect, you know, that are, they're just better versions of what what they look like. You know, this is like a, a city of brass, but instead of doing pain to you, it helps your opponent. Um, and that one of the reasons that is is because one of the key rules of uh, of micro sealed is that you can at any time pay three life to shuffle your graveyard into your library. Now you'd want to do that a lot because we're going to be micro sealed. The micro part is about small, obviously, and the small here is decks. We use those 90 cards to make decks of 15 cards, mm -hmm. including lands. That's not 15 spells. That's 15 cards, including lands. And you play those decks against each other. And when one, and then you play a match, and when you lose, the loser has to make a new deck without using any of the cards they've already used, and they can reuse any lands they want. Um, it looks fantastic, um, but we need these special lands for it. Um, I haven't played this format yet, uh, so I can't say for sure. It's awesome. Uh, I'm highly looking forward to it. I'm going to make the cards today so that we can play it. I don't know if we'll play today. Uh, I'd like to give me give me another day to just like look over it. Yeah, all exactly. Yeah. So because it's it's a little complicated too. To it is a little complicated to 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 to, to grok initially. Um, you're going to want to read the article. Uh, you may want to read the article more than once. Yes. And then at the bottom, it includes things like why we're doing it and things like that. And it even includes an example PlayStation of multiple or play session of multiple decks versus multiple other decks. Um, and it's it's you know it'll take a bit to get used to, but uh, check it out. I have a feeling it's going to be awesome. Um, but we're making cards for that, so. Uh, again, we're going to put this link in there, but we need to make Evolved Wild Cards. We've made the Brass Burn Wheels, we're going to make Evolved Wild Cards. To do that, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put them in the colorless section, because these are colorless cards. Uh, in Cube, uh, the color identity is usually what a color identity is, with some exceptions. It's kind of more commander-ish, even. Mm -hmm. um, it has to do with whatever mana symbols are on the card. Like, Yosoba Dragon Claw is usually considered a teamer card, because she's got, she's, yes, she's just green, but she's got a red blue in her ability to steal things. So she's usually considered a teamer card. Um, lands, if they are multicolored lands, are usually considered colorless cards because they don't really fit a particular color identity. Um, duels, however, because they fit a particular color identity of a guild, uh, do count as that guild, uh, for example. But we're creating colorless cards because these count for any color. So let's open up the colorless section. Well, I think we already did that. Um, I think so, yeah. So, so here we go. Yeah. So here's the set editor. Open up. Now, one thing I'm actually going to do with y'all, that, uh, what you're going to need to do is, well, you're going to come up with a new set. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So a new set, it's going to ask you, the most important thing to do is pick the back. You don't want Vanguard. You want this one. And then you're going to want to pick your style. Now, again, you can pick this one. I think it defaults to this one. Um, Grr. Again, I think you're wrong. <laughs> uh, but again, I'm playful. Hopefully you understand that it's playful, but again, I think you're wrong. <laughs> um, you, you you want this one. Aha. You want the pretty modern style. Now, here's one thing that, here's a design decision that you want to make about your cube. There are a large number of frames. Holy crap, yeah. Okay, you can make pretty much everything. Now, some of the old, old school cards would be pretty hard to make identical. 
Mm. Um, I'm talking, you know, your 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 alpha artifacts. The artifact. Oh, I don't. I don't really see a frame that could properly do an alpha artifact. But I'm sure if we went to that list where that we saw earlier, you'd find one. Yeah. So you can. Um, however, something I recommend for your cube is to unify the look of your cube. Mm -hmm. you, these proxies, we don't want them to look identical to the original cards anyway, because we want them easily identifiable as counterfeits that we're not trying to pass off as real cards. Furthermore, if we're doing that, why not improve upon nature <laughs> and fix the problems? Like banishing the M15 style card frame from Alesha. <laughs> she needs to be free to be in the, the full glory of the modern guard frame. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, I, it. Amen, brother. <laughs> in all seriousness, I do think that you probably want to pick a card frame and stick with it for your full cube. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you can choose to, to mix and match, but that's going to have some issues. We're going to talk about that. Um, and we're going to talk about that, you know, in a minute. Um, I'll, I'll do it with a token. We'll put a token in here. Uh, we usually have, we have tokens actually in a separate um, thing, not only for organizational sake, but because of frame issues. Now, when we create a new set and we choose a frame here, this is setting the default frame for all new cards in the set. And we hit OK, we're going to get up a new little window and it's going to automatically create a card for us and it's going to just be this blank card here uh, that has nothing on it. In fact, we'll do all of our creating in this window and we'll copy our card into here for saving it. We'll mm. actually, yeah, we'll do that. So we'll just actually close this. We don't even need to look at that. We'll do everything in this brand new window. So we've got a brand new card, we've got a brand new frame, these are all modern frames. Now, there's some things we can look at on this card that we don't want. One thing is if we look down here in the corner, it's kind of hard to see, but I'll kind of, I'll try to highlight it. But down here in the corner is the, is the set, set information, the set numbers. Now, the Mag Magic Set Editor has an automatic numbering system. Mm -hmm. It automatically numbers in the same way a set is numbered in color, then alphabetical order. You cannot override those numbers. The only way to override those numbers is to actually arrange your cards in such a way so that whatever number you want to appear there is that is there. Um, that's one of the things that's built in to help prevent full counterfeiting of cards. Because unless you're printing the full set, you know the set number is not going to match. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, and especially since you might be printing in small chunks and within separate things, the card, the set number is pretty meaningless as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Fortunately, we can go over here to the set info tab. And here we can put in some information, but we don't really care about any of that. We can change some things like the color of our border. If you change your colors of your borders to white, you're not only... you. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. It's oh. Black borders all the way. Um, I will buy the white border cards because they're cheaper, but black borders all the way. This, just pretend this doesn't drop down. <laughs> um, so there is some automatic reminder text. We'll see some of that when we create some cards. I'll create. I'll, I'll show you some. I'll just type some in just to show you. And we can turn some of those off. Um, I always just leave them as the default because it's easy. But one thing we do want to change is this thing right here, automatic card numbers. We want to set that to no. That's going to turn them off. We're not going to see them on the card. They're not going to get printed. We don't want those. Um, some things we can also do is sort, you know, sorting language, you know, errors, spell checking basically, um, and then gradient. We can sign gradients if we want. Uh, these are again, these are left faults, not the whole thing. But this does apply to everything. We want to set that for sure. Now we've got a card. Okay. Now let's let's finish talking about general styles. So this frame right here is your general modern frame and it can be used for most cards. Mm -hmm. It can be used for lands, it can be used for sorceries, instants, creatures, enchantments, the whole nine yards. Um, artifacts. Now there are a few things that this frame is not appropriate for. Uh, the first of those obviously is planeswalkers. This frame does not accommodate planeswalkers, but fortunately when we create a card, we don't want to use this button. This is the new set button. We want to use this button. This is the new card button. So we'll add a new card. And we're going to delete it in a minute. 
we can come over here to Style tab. And here on the Style tab we see we've got this whole thing up here again. Mm -hmm. So we can override on a per card basis what our creature is, what our card is. So this is a walker, so we change it to walkers. So we can do some other things and change some options. One thing that's important, one thing that's interesting here is first note there's this. <coughs> one thing on the style tab, um, okay, there's a little confusion here in this UE and that we're going to point it out. First of all, this applies to the card we're on, okay? Choosing the frame applies to the card we're on. If we wanted to apply to everything, we click this button and it'll change every card in the set that we've got to use that template. You probably don't want to press that button. Mm -hmm. Now, down here we've got the opposite. It's weird, but we have a bunch of options that apply to everything. But we can check, an op check a box to make them apply to this thing. Now, some of, most of these you want to leave alone. Most of these are fine. You want mana symbols, normal. You want, you know, you don't want the crazy guild symbols that are use the guild symbol. We don't want that. We just want regular hybrid symbols. You know, the thing that I do change is this right here. Now, center text default to never, which is good for most things, but some things, like your good old-fashioned lightning bolt, lightning bolt has a text box that says, lightning bolt deals three damage to target creature or player. That's all. No, no flavor text, no nothing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fill the box very well, and when it's left justified, it looks terrible. Mm -hmm. So you can easily just you can switch things to all you know to go to short text only. And usually things like light that like lightning bolt would qualify. Something usually. like a lightning angel is just flying vigilance haste. That's it. That would qualify. That would qualify. And that does qualify. That is small enough to to match this short text only. But I don't like the algorithm it chooses. I like to be in full control. So what I do is I set the default to never, and then set it, well, set the default to never, and then on a specific card, I then say, I want this one to be always mm -hmm. centered. So, um, that's the options here. I don't really know what this other stuff does. I haven't messed with it. Cool stuff if you want it. But that's how you change the frame. Now, important things about the frame, um, you may have to. Now, watch what happens when, okay, we're going to actually paste. We're going to open the tokens real quick. Okay. Now, we're going to paste. Hey there, come here often? <laughs> we're going to, we've got, uh, we're going to take, we're, I don't want to do the salt model. Well, that's okay, it'll, it'll look even funnier. So we're going to copy this card. You can copy cards in between sets very easily. Just right click, copy and paste. And we'll paste. And now we've added Basalt Monolith. But check it out! It's Basalt Monolith, the token! That's pretty cool. So, because this set, the token set, is defaulting to the token frame, the Basalt Monolith, even though over here it's set to the modern frame, it didn't keep it over here when we placed it into the... Um, That's nice. ...into the tokens. So, we end up with a token frame. Now, one thing that we want to do, we, we need to keep that in mind, when we're printing, because sometimes we paste cards that mismatch and we get tokens printed with non-tokens, and some mm. we don't want our basalt monolith looking like a token. If we do forget, we end up with things like we end up with things like. Can you see that? Uh, they can't really. Ah, there we there go. There we go. We end up with things like this. Snapcaster token. Snapcaster the token, which that's super cool. He's yeah. actually like when I show people off. How to make the cube in person? I've got a little sleeve with some cards that I wipe. You know, got some white cards. Yeah. And I show them snap caps of the token because he's a misprint. That's awesome. Tiago Chan would be, would be proud of you. Tiago Chan. 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 Yeah, Chan. So. Yeah. So. To avoid snap cast for the token, you want to when you pasted your card in to then go over to the style tab again and say this is not a token. This is. A modern style card, and then everything's everything. Everything's fine. Um, just want to point that out, um, and I'm going to undo that paste because that card doesn't need to be in there. And we'll close the tokens. We'll get. Well, actually, we're going to open the. I should have left it open because we're going to need the tokens. We're going to be pasting a token um, in a little bit, and we'll have to actually change the token spray. 
But we'll get there when we get to printing. So, back to where we were. That's frames. Um, I don't think there's any other quest. There shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any other questions about frames. Uh, if you have any questions about frames, put them in the comments. I will. Uh, I'll try to read them every so often. Jay will tell me if I need to read them. There we go. So, um, so that's the frame. So next, uh, we did some set info stuff. That's good. So now we'll look at the parts of the car, right? Now, uh, this one of the cool things about Magic Set Editor is it kind of knows what kind of cards or what cards are. If we look here, we right or we click on the uh, not the border because the border we change the color, but if we click on the background, we can change the background to specific colors if we'd like. We can set them to artifact or land, or we can even go to multicolor and get our gold. We can do, I don't even know what that stuff, oh that's if we did multicolor, right. We can change, we can, what is it? how do we set those? Well, one of the ways we, 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 how do I get hybrid to turn on? Let me, uh, yeah, why is it not? Oh, here we go, you gotta select two colors. Uh -huh. you, gotta select two, you, you select the two colors you want. If you want, okay, so let's talk about making the, the background color. So, let's make all of them. So if you want whatever color, well, let's discuss, let's discuss one thing first. Before you go, you, you end up, you go changing any of these background stuff. There's two things you should do first. First, you can put in the name, but let's skip that for right now. One of the first things you want to do is put in the mana cost. If you have one. Um, is it, what is there? Why is that there? There we go. So, if we had a mana cost, let's say that was zero, one, let's put that in there. Um, that's not. But one of the nice things is if this was, say, a Savannah Lion, and we put in white, and we tap out, why did that not, am I not in the white field? It looked like you, it looked like you were. Let me get a new card. Let me delete these cards. So I've been messing around with the cards. I've been, I might have messed something up. No cards. Right. So, new card. Click in here. White. There. So, when you put in the mana cost, it should change your frame. It'll even do it. If you do that, it will change to multicolored and including uh -huh. changing the border to blended white red. Now, if this was more of, you know, if this was, say, like if we look at Tattermunge Maniac, He's a red-green border. He doesn't have, you know, he's a, he's a red-green hybrid. We can actually make these a hybrid. Let's make this a hybrid. So we make this a hybrid mana, and as we see, the frame changed to a blue-white background. Now, what did you press to do that? Now, to get the mana symbols, the mana symbols are what you expect. W, U, B, G, and R. Uh, you can also use capital T for the tap symbol. And uh, I, you have to paste in the untapped symbol. Now, to get hybrid mana, you just put the two symbols and put a slash between them. You put a slash between the two symbols, it combines them. Ah. To do a Phyrexian, I think it's H. Uh, H is colorless Phyrexian. I thought, I mean, it's H slash? Yeah, H slash color makes a Phyrexian of whatever that color is. You can also use the format insert symbol to insert any symbol that you could possibly want. You know, there's hybrid, number hybrids, you know, there's two color, all the two color hybrids if you don't want to type. You know, um, sometimes it doesn't like, sometimes it just won't go. Um, some places, there's a lot of auto formatting of text where it should automatically pick whether it's a two, whether it's, you know, like down here in the text box, a lot of times when you put a two, like this one, it should pick up as a mana cost. No, it, that'll pick up as a mana cost. So it realizes that's a mana cost. But if we type uh, tap two elves, so they were Burklaw Rangers, that it realizes that should be just the numeral two. Now sometimes that two should be in the number, the symbol. And sometimes, so to get that, we just, you know, there's, there's no way to override it with the keyboard, but here we just go insert symbol, Variable mana, or that's not, we don't want X. We want colorless mana, we want two. 
and there's two. Now, if we had a two, I wonder if it'll let me do this. Now, if it automatically has auto, no, I'll probably, I'll probably have to do it this way. Hold on. So this one autoed to two, but let's pretend that it's not supposed to be two for whatever reason. I know that's not a very good example. I'm just trying to make the auto formatting work. You could use close bra brace or close bracket and then open bracket and it'll escape it hmm. and turn it into an actual digit. There are several places in cards where I had the numeral being turned into mana costs when hmm. it shouldn't be and you just use brackets on either side of the numeral and it'll turn it around. So, um, the same thing if you wanted capital letters like capital H or W or U by itself that didn't turn into symbols, though I don't know why you would. You need them. They're there. Um, use the braces. Um, right. So, one thing though, this automatically sets a color. Sometimes it doesn't do it right. Sometimes it'll set it as this damn thing. Um, I've had this happen with lands, especially when I've been setting up a land, you know, with no color. Oh, here we go. We're setting up, let's, let's pretend we're setting up, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hallowed Fountain. Uh, we want Hallowed Fountain to be blue-white. We want it to have the blue-white borders around the edges, these right here, all around the edge. We want white over here and blue over here. Um, but we want it to fade blue to white. We don't want this old background, but when we right-clicked, or when we clicked over here and we selected, let's, let's unselect all of them. Right, we'll set it back to normal. So what happens is we, we, we so generally we select white and then we select blue. It automatically does a couple things. It does give us the border we want, the edges we want, but we've got a gold background and this isn't really a gold card. Um, we want it to be white and blue. Uh, so let's fix that. So we fix that by replacing the unchecking, multi or well we have to check hybrid first. And it'll switch from hybrid to multicolor and that fixes that problem. But if you notice, there's another thing that happened when we chose to click these two, and we went to multicolored, and that's we got it. We got our color indicator button here. Uh, now this is useful when you're supposed to have a color indicator button. Um, Dryad Arbor needs one. Mm -hmm. Garuk the Veil Cursed needs one when he's flipped over because he has no mana cost, but he is still black green. Insectile Aberration. That's Insectile like Aberration needs aberration. one to be blue. Um, he's not in my queue, but yeah, if yeah, you yeah. had him, he's blue. And he needs a, you know, all of the double face cards need them. Um, so they're there, and they can be, you know, they should be there, but we don't want them on our land. There's no need for them to be there. So you click them, and you can actually just turn them off. And they'll go away. And you can turn them on if you want. Um, I don't know how to turn them back on. Because I don't really want. Well, I turned them on from the double face cards, but I think they came on automatically, and I just set them to the right thing. So that's the uh, that's the what is this? The background, I guess. <laughs> um, that's how you set the background. Um, there are some other options, like yeah, you can change how the that's that. There we go. That changes how the gradation is. You really don't want to do that. I don't know what the difference from that is. I don't see it. Oh well. So. And then you can reverse it if you're weird, but it does it in default magic order, so keep it that way. Um, unless you don't want to. So then let's talk about, let's start filling in the card. And look at the different parts of the card. So of course we can fill a name. You just click in here and type in a name. Now it does spell check. Well, it doesn't spell check name. It'll spell check the other places, but it won't spell check name. Now we are Evolved Wild. We do not have a mana cost. This is where we put mana cost. We don't have one, and we are actually, we're a land. Actually, let's not check the land box. We, we come over here, and there's a type box here. If we can click the damn thing. There we go. Type. Why? Why won't it let me get the damn down arrow? Okay, so, you can actually activate the, uh, the down arrow with your keyboard, with down arrow, or the drop down with down arrow. I don't know why my mouse was doing it. It usually doesn't. And here's where you select what it is. Uh, we are making a, it is not a basic land, but you can make it a basic land by checking that. You can make it a basic legendary land, which that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> um, well, we are not a tribal snow world. We are just a land. Now, if we look on this list, 
we'll see that we've got most of the things we want. Artifacts, artifact creatures, creatures, instant sorceries, and we've got all of our all of our uh, super types except for the proposed one that we should have token um, ready for here. Um, ready to go. But sometimes this isn't enough. Um, even let's say this is a land creature. Right? Oh, it's a creature. Oh, yeah, let's go with the creature right now. We'll go back to land in a minute. We're just going to explain that. We'll choose creature. Let's say this is a creature. You also can do subtypes with a drop down. In here, here are common subtypes that people, you know, to choose. Then you've got all races, and you can choose a whole bunch. They, they have 90-something percent of types that are in the comprehensive rules. Um, it's also not the easiest interface. I usually just just type it in. Uh, you can type in multiple, you know, each space will give you a new keyword. This creature has a lot of key, lots and lots of types. You put as many as you want. Uh, useful for when you get things like a fully ramped up uh, figure of destiny who is a kith kin warrior spirit. Avatar. Now, you notice it actually shrunk it down <laughs> to fit. So, you know, on an actual magic card, it'll actually put dot, dot, dot on the card. And you wouldn't actually get to see all of the different types it has. But one of the nice things about this, it'll actually fit text in. So, you'll actually see all of the types that are, that it, that are available. Uh, now, if you notice here, this doesn't work for uh, Theros block very well because you can't, you know, we've got artifact creatures, but we don't have enchantment creatures. So,. Uh, our courses, though, aren't out of luck. We can just type it in. Um, in fact, if we hit like hit enter or something, we can make them separate. I'm not sure. We don't need to worry about it. Uh, just need to put it on there. And you can put and you can still add. You know, it'll still. Oh, it messed it up. I guess you have to. Have, I guess if you change the type, it'll it'll mess it up. Um, but you can put whatever you want there. Uh, one of the nice things you can do um, is even for like lands, if you're do, having duels, it'll have plenty of room to do this. All of the above. Um, you actually have these, I think, on the. Yeah, yeah, these are actually available here. You choose the land type, you can get suggestions. Again, I just usually type. Um, so, back to Evolve Wilds. That's about all the types, I think. Um, Again, the type usually changes the frame to what it needs to be, and you can always adjust it by typing it in, what you, whatever you need. Um, so our type is a land, it's just a basic land, there's nothing else there for us. Now we come over here. Over here, we have the uh, set the set, uh, set symbol. Um, you can supply your set symbol. To be honest, I don't know how. I've never bothered. Well, you, um, since you're not actually trying to like push the proxies, you're not. You I'm not trying really to push proxies. Either, right? I don't care. I'm not trying to make complete counterfeits. I don't care. Yeah. And one of the awesome things is when I thought about it, I thought I thought for a second about creating, you know, finding a symbol or whatever for my cube, and then I looked at the default symbol and it's a big black square for my cube. Makes sense. Square I mean, cube. Geometry. Yeah. Perfect. So I left it, but here you can. You know, that's the symbol. And, but what you can also do is see that you can also set rarity here. You know, and it'll change colors. Uh, I personally never bothered in my set. Uh, if we actually look at some of my sets, or look at my set, no matter what the card is, you can see that it's always just a black square. I always left it alone. Um, rarity changes across sets. Rarity is an important in the cube, whether the card is rare or not, because you know, every card is equally rare as far as the cube is concerned. Uh, and it just was a waste of my time. So I didn't do it. Feel free to. Uh, I don't know how. Don't ask me how. So, we ignore set information. Now we come down here to the box. Now this box has two sections. You see there's a blue line here. Now this box is devoting two sections. Up here is where we put all the rules text. Now we can put pretty much as much rules text as we want. I mean we could fit a lot. Hold on. Let me, let me pull this up just to show you how much rules text we can pull up. If we look at the card, well there you go. Animate Dead's got a bunch of rules text. 
a little bit of a lunch on there. If we look at, uh, surprisingly, all of these spells are, ne are anime dead spells that have a whole ton of things on them. You know, there's a whole bunch of text. You can put a whole bunch on there. It'll oh, fit. Yeah. It'll fit. Don't worry about it. So, but the two sections, where is my window? I hope I'm not too disjointed for y'all. So we have two sections. This is where rules text are, so don't think about this is the only space you have for it. It will actually do all the formatting for you to do it. But I recommend that you don't start up here. I recommend you start down here. Because when we start typing rules text, I can't type very well. So I'm going to copy and paste that a bunch. So now we've co copied a bunch of stuff we got a bunch of rules text in here. Now it's really hard to get down here. Yes, I still can do it, but sometimes we got even a little bit more. Now it's impossible. Now I can't get to that other section. And now I've got to undo some typing, get down in here, do the typing I need to do down here, and then come up here and finish what I was doing. So I recommend that you start, instead of up here, that you start down here. This block, as you saw, there was in italics. Yes, you can control it up here, but it automatically defaults. This is for flavor text. Again, flavor text is up to you. I do it because some cards are blank without them. Savannah Lions would have nothing in this area if you didn't put flavor text in there. That's right. And it would look ugly as sin, so I put flavor text there. Um, some cards don't like need it, like Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt looks cool without flavor text, because mm -hmm. Lightning Bolt's just pure damage. So who needs flavor? Um, flavor text up to you, but I recommend if you're going to put flavor text in, put it in first. Then you just type in whatever. Is there any flavor text on the No, there's no flavor text on those lands. So, we're going to ignore that, and we're going to come here and put in our text for our land. And I can't copy it. I recommend, uh, when, when you're doing this, especially for, here's another point, especially for typing in rules information, that you come to my favorite card site, magiccards.info, and look up whatever cards you're doing. Right? Let's say we're doing Evolving Wilds. So, here, we can, there's a couple things we can do. We can see all the sets it's available in, so we can see what all kinds of art, so when we're choosing art, which we're getting to, that's here. Mm -hmm. But the best important thing is we can copy and paste not only the flavor text, but also, most importantly, the rules text. Now this rules text up here is oracle text. Mm -hmm. Now this is something I recommend for your cube. It's something I did for my cube, and I think your players will very much appreciate it. Amen. Especially if they're not familiar with these old cards. Put well, the oracle text in. Mm -hmm. Don't copy the card. Don't make the card look like it what it was, you know. A lot of cards don't read very well and they can read you know, we have oracle text and you'll just have to end up looking up it up looking it up on your phone. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Put the oracle text in. Just copy here and paste here. Right? Got go. the whole thing. And then we can just take these braces around the tap, and now we've got a tap, and we've got the whole thing in there ready to go. Nice. So, unfortunately, this is not the card we're doing. However, I think we can just remove that word, and we have the card we're doing. Ta da! I think. Put it onto the battlefield? Yes! Okay. So, so now we're here at art. Oh, we're well, at one more change. Sacrifice evolved oh, thank wilds. You. Thank you. No problem. Uh, evolved wilds. Right. So, now, a field, now a field that I think is very important for you to fill in. Uh, especially since we're doing proxies and they're free and we're going for fair use. So if you want to be fair, be fair. We haven't picked our art yet, but in this case we know because we've only got the one art. And we know that the artist is... I'm going to have to get up there and look. Can you like control plus and zoom in? Aha! So, we know that... Ah, uh, oh, dang it. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at that closely, like, unzoomed so it's not pixelated. Yeah. Um, I'll find out who that is. Actually, I'm going to find out who that is right now. I think that's Sabo is what that says. Maybe. It's a control zero to yep. get you back. Oh, yeah, you got it. 
Tafo Tesho Tesho. Let's see if we can. We gotta search up who this guy is. <laughs> well, let's see if it's on his. Let's see if we can find. Well, okay. We'll remind. We'll put the art and guy's name in after we find the image. We'll get there and get an image. We're about there anyway. Uh, but a field that I think is really important, and you'll find that if you look at every single one of my cards that I have given in the art field credit to whoever, whatever artist I chose. Now, I didn't always, you know, every, every artist I chose was uh, official magic art. You know, I chose was one I liked, admittedly. Um, but whoever's art I chose, I always gave them credit. You're stealing their art for your game. You're not charging admittedly. You're not making money. But it, uh, at least give the artist some credit, okay? Mm -hmm. So put the artist in. And what's also fun is doing this will let you know who you think are your best magic, you know, who you, who you really like as magic artists. I found out that I love Therese Nielsen. You mm -hmm. know, by typing in all these names, I found that I, I just really love Therese Nielsen. I found that I've been picking her art a lot. I like Kev Walker a lot. I pick his art a lot. So it's, it's you know, it's interesting. Um, and, of course, Noah Bradley makes the best lands anybody's ever seen. Uh, he needs to make more art. He's my favorite artist. Or, well, probably my favorite, but if he'd make more than damn lands. Um, and moat. <laughs> <laughs> moat. Um, oh, fine. Um, so, but put the artist's name in. I really, I really recommend it. it. They deserve it. You know. Yeah, they're not getting the money, but they got paid already. Um, at least give them credit. So we'll put that in. So then we look at the card, and we've got pretty much everything in it. Hey, it didn't change. Our, oh yeah, that's the land background. Yeah. Land. There we go. Right, land. It got screwed up when we did the when we messed with the type. So we set it to land. Now, things we need to do. All the fields, the color indicator, the frame in color. All right, looks like we're here to finding images. Now, putting in images is pretty easy. We just double click and you just choose one. But let's talk about how you get the image. So, let's get our first particular image first. Now, I recommend for getting images this, this exact process. First, well, let's go look at, well, I'll leave that one open. We'll dupe this tab. Right. So you go to Google Images, is what I recommend. That's where you start. And we're not actually going to start with, we're going to start with Evolving Wilds. Right, so we start with Evolving Wilds here in Google Images. And we get a bunch of pictures of the cards. But one of the nice things we notice is, hey, look here. Ta-da! Ta-da! That's an 800 by 500, or 800 by 600, just the art. Let's save that, which I did at one point, that, that, that exact image, and let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we save it. Again, I recommend that you, uh, oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. So, I recommend that you create a folder for all of the images that you're going to create. I used to call it card art. And then I break that folder up into color, just because there's so many images, you're going to want to break them up. So we go into colorless, and I'm going to save this, but we look here, wait a second, you know, this is saving as an HTML document. We're like, where's the rest of my images? Well, the reason why is sometimes Google Images, even though you've got an image here and you click save uh, image as, it's not actually the image. So you actually have to open that image. You have to go in, you know, open in a new tab. All right, we'll open that tab up. And now we see, oh, we're actually on an HTML page. Now we can click that image. Oh, now we got to try. Oh, great. And click maybe view image here. There we go. Now we found the image, the actual image. You know, so sometimes you have to go through some hoops to find the actual image. But then when you do, you save it. Hey, look, there's all the rest of them. I usually uh, name it because it's easier. You know, in fact, it's probably already here. Um, Oh, this is white. We don't want to save this in white. That's something you find that you'll do is you'll save in the wrong section and then you'll try to pull up the image and you can't find it. So yeah, see Evolving Wilds? It's there, you know, and you just save it. So I'm not actually, actually going to save it. So you just find it through Google Images, okay? And we'll save those images. Your best bet is to find the images without any border, you know, like this. Large scale, full art, nothing else. However, sometimes we don't have that. Um, sometimes, let's see if I can find one. The next best thing, well, it's kind of a tie for next best thing, and it's up to you to decide which is next best. 
So the next, bet, one of the next best thing is we often, if you see, um, you'll you'll see just lists and lists of cards. Now, if you scan over them, oh, there we go. Oh, that's a bad color, though. Uh, if you scan over them, you'll see the resolution in the lower corner. We don't want it. Here we go. Now, this one is in Spanish. We don't want that. There we go. So, this one is 500 by 500. So, that's that's pretty big. We're going to save this image. and we're Because we're gonna, when we get to importing it, we're going to show you how big it is. I'm just going to save it like that. Um, so that should be big enough. Uh, usually I go for like 480 by 640 is the, I think the image size that I try to find among these. Guys. There it is. Yeah, I usually try 680. I usually try to find this guy. Well, actually, but you know the other guy will be fine. But we'll save this one too. Um, so this is the one you usually want to try to find is one of your close seconds if you can't find this. You can't find this. However, uh, one of the other, the other tied for a second, I'm going to have to go to a different card. I'm trying to got to think of one that would have... Uh, think of a card that's recently had a playmat play, played of it. A oh, playmat? Uh, or... Well, all, didn't like Sacred Fountain, like some of the shock lands... Oh, Brainstorm! Perfect! Oh, yeah. Love the brainstorm play map. Often you usually got to put uh, MTG. You should almost always put MTG in your uh, in your search. So the other thing is we get things like play mats. Now this one's actually a bad example. Uh, I don't like it. Another thing we often get is wall wallpaper from uh, from wizards. Um, both of them usually have very large copies of the image, but they often have some extra text on them. But one of the things you can do is we can uh, get chunks. We can take a cropped section. If the image, if the, I think moat was that way. I think I actually didn't moat this way. Come on. Eh, I guess I'm wrong. Those are all already cropped. Uh... One of them comes from Wizards with, you know, wallpaper, you know, there we go, we've got some. Yeah. yeah, here we go, here we go. If we look at this image, you know, oh, we got some, got some text down here from Wizards. We got a little logo here, a little logo here, some up there. Um, now this one I wouldn't recommend because of it's, you know, where it's cropped, but some of them are okay where we can crop just inside all the logos and still get the full flavor of the card and not really miss much of the art and it'll be better than our other options. If we don't have a, you know, like a 480 by 6 whatever um, of the card, you know, that's often a better solution. Now, your final solution, if you can't find it anywhere else in here, um, and some suggestions in searching, let me do that real quick. Uh, you, you often want to search MTG, but you'll often find what's funny is if you put MTG at the front, uh, most not a good example, but you'll find that if you put MTG at the front, you'll often get a different set of results than you will at the end. One of them will, will present more cards than the other, more raw cards than the other, uh, like card pictures, and some of them just aren't. So you want to mess around with those. Now, importing the ca card images. So we just double click. Now, if you got the big image, this is super easy. We select the big image, let's go to colorless. Oh, I didn't show you the final result. Sorry, 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 sorry. I, I apologize. So, last comes to last. We come back over here to magiccards.info. They have high quality scans at just under those 480, I think, images. Um, you can always look up your card here, select which art you want here. These are all the same. And then just right click and save here. Uh, a good number of, your car, of my cards came from here, and this provides a decent image, and we'll see how decent in just a second. Um, so we come over here to import. Now if we've got this giant image, you know, we come to this window. We then get a, a box to say, well this is what your card's going to be. So you get to get to crop your image, because sometimes the image isn't exactly card sized, um, to where it is. Now interesting things, it does scale uh, 
automatically for you. You can set these selections by programmatically, but you usually just want to use your thing. Well, the important thing you want to notice here that it's going to, you always want to keep the fixed aspect ratio. Always keep that. But it's going to have this zoom. It will automatically zoom for you. And you can even, like, it will change the zoom and all these properties based on the size of the thing you choose. Mm -hmm. Now, for this large one, we usually just want to leave it at the maximum zoom. We don't want to zoom at all. Uh, in fact, this one is zooming out because the image is so large. And that's going to give us the highest quality. We're going to just generally center it and say OK. And then, bang, there's our image. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Now, if we don't have the giant image, we're not so lucky. Let's say we have that high quality image that we got that from Google Images. Well, now we've got this whole image thing, but now we see that this box is too big. So what we do, in fact, I usually do it from the start, is just pull into the left side, pull into the right side, and then you just drag it down. And then you're pretty much lined up. At that point, you get up close, which I can't really see from where I'm sitting, but you zoom in just enough so that you just cover the border out. And then you've got your image. You know, if you want to do some juggling around, you can, but generally you want to use where the card is. Um, one thing I see you'll notice from this high quality card, this, this 480 by 640 or whatever it was, we're at zoom level 75%. So we're actually still zooming out, so we're retaining 100% of the detail from our source image, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. So again, just as pretty. Now, let's look at the 500 that we found. That was this guy. This guy, not so big, but still I think it should be fine. Well, maybe it's not as good as I think. Oh, it should be fine. So, yeah, it's still a little better. So there's roughly where it is. I guess I can see a little border on the other side. So we can, you know, there could be some fiddling. That's roughly where it is. Um, you'd want to be precise. But notice here, we're actually zoomed out. We're actually 104% blown up. So we're actually losing a little detail here from this 500 by 500% card. Now, 104 is not bad. You know, on a two inch car, on a car that's actually been printed out in a two inch section, you're not going to really notice that detail. And it's actually fine. Uh, that's why I recommend that's about where you want to go. Um, it's 104. It's not bad. Uh, again, we don't want it because, again, we take what we can get. And then finally, if we looked at, oh, uh, what the hell did I name it? Hmm. Or did I not name it? Uh, which one? Are we? The last of all the worlds. Let me just save it again. Let me just save it again. So we're going to save the one from, uh, right. Oh, I saved it in tokens. It got oh. saved in tokens, that's why. So that's what happens. You don't, you don't, uh, yeah, I'm just saving 33. That's fine. Um, you actually save it in the wrong folder. You won't find it. So try to keep track. There it is. 33. So now we've got the one from, from magiccards.info, your last, last stop. You know, sometimes you'll have to get there for your more obscure cards. And we're going to zoom, we're going to cut in here. And we're about there. And we see that, well, that's not right. That's a little far out. It's usually, yeah, see, we can come out to the border still. Yeah, there we go. So there's there's where we're zoomed in. And you'll find that when you use a magic card you're going to get 112, 113% zoom in. Mm -hmm. Which, not desirable, but as your worst case scenario, way doable. So, um, there you go. That's how you find your images. That's how you use your images. Um, insert, inserting them again. We want to, oh, so. Let's do the image for my card. So, we need to find the bald ones. So, unfortunately, because this is just one card for a, you know, super strange form, you know, format, we've got one option. This is our biggest thing. And hey, look at that. We can read that perfectly clearly. Sweet. Nice. So we're going to save this image. I bet we're going to have the... Oh, this is just JPEG image. We're in colorless, so Evolve Wild. Save that. And that is Sub-06. Sub so remember, be nice to your artist. Is it like Big Hero 6? I, I guess. <laughs> put the uh, put their name in. They oh, deserve yeah. it. Absolutely. Especially, especially if it's Rebecca Gay, because you, you have Therese Nielsen, I have Rebecca Gay. 
So this one, it says it's a JPEG, but it didn't actually open in the set editor. We actually follow a link and we're, hey, look, we're on a damn forum. So now we got to find out where the damn card is on the forum. Oh, that's great. So good luck to us. I'll be in here somewhere. Let me, hold on. Sometimes you can just say view image and it'll yeah, hit it. There we go. Hey. It's just a photo bucket. Often there will be direct links to photo bucket. I've noticed this several times photo bucket is especially bad about this. It actually, it says it's JPEG, but then their Apache rewrite can, things send you to the HTML. Then hmm. you get to this page and then you can actually just go uh, view yeah. image again, Ta -da. get the image, save the image, replace the damn thing you've got, come back over here. And now, it looks like a card. Hopefully we've got a decent sized image, so it won't be too bad. I've actually got to come close to it so I can actually see. So yeah, I'm make actually some for you. No, I'm yeah. good right here. Okay. I don't even know if I'm on camera or not, but... Wow. Oh sweet, it's 100. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Perfect! Perfect. <laughs> All right. So we have an image. We have a card. We have rules text. We have an artist. All right. So let's talk about. So that's how you make cards in general. Um, yeah, that's how you make most of the cards. So let's talk about some things that are special. Um, on my list, I've got uh, double face cards special. Let's look at double face cards real quick. They are an option in here somewhere. Modern double face cards. So when you select one, you get two cards, and you just fill it in like normal. Absolutely like normal. Um, the back, you will have to use the uh, this yeah. menu to set the colors, and you will want the color identity to pop up, but it'll pop up for you. Otherwise, it's just the same. When you put its name on, on there, It will just show up on the side as first slash last. Why did I say slash last over there? Huh. It says slash last for my merciless predators and everything. Whatever. Do you have to click out of it first? Maybe. Before it does it? No. Oh. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, I mean like click into a, a text box. Like the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, it I, still I, didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I changed, I changed cards. Oh, I don't know then. It's weird. Whatever. Um... Huh. There's double face cards. Fill them all in. They fill in just like normal. Nothing super special. One thing you know about double face cards, we'll bring it up again in printing and I'll show you how. Uh, double face cards cannot be printed with normal sets because they're two cards and the way they deal with them, it's stupid. Mm. So, it's stupid. Like, really stupid. Um, they can't be printed with regular cards. We'll deal with that when we get to print. So, that's double face cards. We don't want to deal with those. Let's look at uh, next. We got planeswalkers. There's a couple things I want to point out about Planeswalkers. Let me get something that's smaller. There we go. So, one thing to notice about walkers is you may not have noticed this on a walker card in the past, but the art of the walker extends underneath the text box. Hmm. The art of the walker can be done in Magic Set Editor. So let's pull up... Uh, Ha. So, let's pull up our friend of mine, Sculptor. Uh, planeswalkers, you can always find on Wizard's site the full art for the Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. Just specifically search Planeswalker, like the full Planeswalker's name with full art. You will always find the full art of it. Well, I have yet to find, not find the full art of a walker. So then we want to select, you know, however much of the walker we want to show on the card. We get a preview over here to show us you know, what it looks like. We want to stop about the top, but we don't want his feet. You know, there we go. So, as we can see down here underneath, he's still under, you know, he's, he, he peeks through. So, with walkers, you don't want to use the card image. The card image is not going to do walkers. You're going to want to, want to go find the full art of the walker. And you can always do it. I mean, I've always found it. So, there he is. I love that Jace's name is first on here. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. First prefer. pick, best first pick. No. Um, so, that's Planeswalkers. And of course, their abilities are like this. Uh, well, 
the way they work is we've got uh, one main field and here's where we type all of the abilities. We hit enter to go to the next ability and we just do it that way. Okay, and we can type as much as we want on one ability and it'll, the text will shrink. Okay, now if we want the loyalty, there is boxes over here for loyalty. Oh uh, wow, nice. And you just type in W, I love it. Whatever loyalty or whatever the, that should be a plus and it will it will point up, point down, whatever. Um, and then there's a box right here where power, oh, I didn't point that out, haha, <laughs> I didn't make a creature. <laughs> Over here in the corner, there's a box for for top, for uh, loyalty. And you put that in there. Um, let me show you a creature real quick since I didn't make a creature. Because that's kind of silly of me. Well, I made one, I didn't make, fully make a creature. Uh, well, you don't even have to say creature. One of the, the box that I forgot to point out is this one right here, which, as you expect, is where power and toughness goes. Um, it's just floating down here in blue, and then when you start typing, the box coming. So that's where you get those. Uh, planeswalkers. Eldrazi. So Eldrazi, you, again, you may not have noticed, uh, but Eldrazi, their art, is also not like everyone else's. They have a clear border. They have no border. Their border is completely clear. Mm -hmm. If we look up, uh, I will, uh, let's see, where is... I think that gives them one of the coolest, yeah. Look so at we look that. here at Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. We see that his art just extends all the way to the border and underneath the text. He's just everywhere. So again, <laughs> with Eldrazi, same with, my, with uh, Planeswalkers, you're going to want to find the full art. Um, there you go. You want to find the full art, and you're going to want to change their frame to the modern clear frame. Again, modern clear frame. No M15 stuff. Well, there is an M15 clear. <laughs> I, won't, I won't lie. Um, and finally, the last set that we want to talk about are... Oh, there's two. There's two. There's two that I want to talk about. Let's go with this one. Well, we can do this. If you want to do promos, you can do promos with the textless. You want, like your promo ponders and whatnot, but I find that you're gonna have readers. You know, yes, your your promo cryptic command, your full art cryptic command looks beautiful. Yeah. But most people don't know what all four modes are. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So don't I, I don't I don't really recommend those. I do recommend these. These are awesome. Jace the land. <laughs> awesome full art lands. Um, you have. Two sections here. You can, you know, you can put in like basic and land and all of that and legendary. But one of the things I did um, when I made my, uh, well, when I made my basic lands, I did go basic land, and then over here chose say island because islands are the best land because they cast blue spells, and then we, you know, put in the the island art. Which, if you haven't seen the island art, I chose uh, Therese Nielsen's uh, Judge Promo art. They're the best. Because Therese Nielsen's the best. Um, I mean, look at how gorgeous those are. I mean, how can, you, how can you not like that? Beautiful. They're just gorgeous. So, you got those. You, you put in there. And one of the nice things about this is it's also got this nice little space here for a symbol. Where you can put, say, a mana symbol. Blam! which will also change the color of the thing. So, this full art one is pretty cool. Um, what's even cooler is when we don't want a basic land. We want Tundra. Right? So we got Tundra, we got full art Tundra, produced by, I don't remember who did the full art, and the, the Vintage Masters. Um, all my alters are actually like official art too. Oh, nice. So. They're just from the online. Vintage Makes measures. sense. Yeah. So you put planes on this side. And one thing I do to make it better is you can put spaces to, you know, essentially uh, center it. Um, so we got a planes island. One of the cool things is you can there are there are symbols you could put in Azorius if you're lame like that. Um, you could put in uh, uh, like where's the, there's hybrid symbols. But one of the things I really like are these colored Xanda hybrid maps. You know, symbols. 
which are this guy Xander, he made these these special symbols that are that are hybrids. And if we look at this one, this is a combo of the blue drop and the white sun and planes, and I think they look pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, the the Demir one looks especially nice. That looks awesome. Heck yeah! So cool stuff. Um, like this frame, use it. Um, got some nice stuff. And then the last frame that of note that we should talk about are naturally where they go. There's levelers if you have some. Those are those are straightforward really. It's, it's tokens. So we look at tokens, um, you know, they have the same basic things. The name slot moves away to to actually be, you know, it starts looking like that. So you have to type in the middle before it actually sees anything, you know. Um, yeah, whatever, I can't type, you know. But then you get the basic stuff here. One thing I recommend doing if you're making proper tokens is not only do you create creature, but you do, like, the one thing modern, like, M15 does right is add the word token. You just put the word token there. It's good. And then you get text. And if you don't have text, it'll automatically default to textless. Um, you can put power and toughness here. And if you have text, you see that there are actually there are actually the two boxes here. Here is the flavor text box, and here is the text box. So we got to take that stupid symbol off. Now, this is set to short centered, so that's good, we want that, you know, but by default, remember, we had our set options, you know, centered was, uh, no, not style options, center, you know, was never by default, you know, that looks like crap. So you want to control centering with the style options here. Um, often the default would be okay, but there you go. Um, so, next. One thing I want to talk about, oh, emblems. So the final type that I want to talk about is emblems. Emblems are way on here, and emblems are special. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> so, let's, I wish I could remove the image. Let me get a new, let me pop a new emblem real quick. So we look at a new emblem. All right, so we got a new emblem. And we put in our name, you know, we put emblem, um, and then we put, I forget how to get the, the second line, but I put an end. Yeah, they don't have an emblem option, but then there's, it's tab, I think, wait, yeah, yeah, you hit tab after typing an emblem, and then we put in, you know, Doretti Scrap. Yes, I can't type. I'm a programmer who can't type. Sue me. Um, so, put in the name at the top. Now, we've got the emblem here. You type in the emblem, you know, text down here that you want. Put in the artist. Please put in the artist. Now, here, the important thing about emblems I want to note is the image. Now, if we look at a normal emblem, let me, let me, uh, We look at look at a token. You know we got uh, Doretti right here. You know we have got the image of the planeswalker over top of the planeswalker symbol, and we can see the planeswalker symbol clearly behind it. Now if we come over here to where we're creating our our emblem, and we add the image. It doesn't matter what. We'll add base all model. You can see that it actually fills up the entire section all the way up here. You know, we'll clip down here, but everything from this line up needs is is filled in. So the way we solve that is through GIMP. This is where we use GIMP or Photoshop. Is we go into GIMP or Photoshop, and I'm not going to show you how to do this. It's too time consuming. But you open up the full art of the Planeswalker in GIMP or <coughs> Photoshop and select the entire planeswalker carefully, the outline of the planeswalker. You then cut that planeswalker out of the image and create a new image large enough to hold the planeswalker with a transparent background. Once you've got a, a planeswalker with a transparent background, like we can look at one real quick, I've got several, 
Um, we'll actually look at what that you know, just like look at it as an image. Uh, card art tokens. Oh so, wow, nice. So here's to ready. We can see that you know after a certain point you can just go straight down because it's not going to be seen. It's going to be underneath this part, so we don't have to worry about cutting them out. But above that, you just trace all the way around. And you see that everywhere around here, the image is gone. It's all on a transparent background. So when we do that, it allows us to. I'm not going to mess with the ready, but we'll open the ready. Um, where are you? Or we'll open DAC. Yes. DAC's cool. We like DAC. Mm -hmm. So there's DAC. Now we choose DAC. Blam! There's DAC. No background, floating in the middle, ready for, for embleming. Now one thing you might want to notice is he's a little bit actually far away as far as emblems go. You know, you might want to zoom him in a bit. That's more like what an emblem looks like. He's off-centered, so you can, you know, take your time. Um, well, he's not actually off-centered, but he, he himself is not balanced. So you might want to shift him over, whatever. You know, but that's how you do emblems. Um, finally, one thing I want to talk about is the automatic text that appears. So let's, I'm going to start typing down here, and we get some cool stuff. Like, yes. I just typed the word infect, and you saw that that entire paragraph about this creature deals damage in the form of minus one, minus one counters because they're completely wrong creatures. Aww. I was about to thank you, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, it'll automatically pop that up. And you hit enter, it'll go underneath the paragraph. You can do that for... Death Touch. Some of them, it'll, it won't do because it assumes you know what Death Touch is. The evergreen keywords Most of the do. evergreens won't. It knows what flying is. However, if you put in Delve, it'll tell you what Delve is. This is an amazing whatever we're, we're casting However, here. It is. <laughs> However, what you can do if you don't like the text, if you don't want to be reminded what in effect does, you can right click it and uncheck the reminder text and it'll go away. And you can still just right click it and put it back if you screwed up. Now one of the things, now usually you will just like the reminder text, it's fine and you want to keep it. Now, one of the reasons I chose Delve is because I don't like Delve's reminder text. Mm. If you read the reminder text, it actually uses the old school Delve reminder text that talks about exiling cards and reducing the cost of the spell. Well, with Concentar Cure and the re-release of Delve, the comprehensive rules have actually been updated so that you don't actually reduce the cost. You're paying the same cost. You're just allowed to exile cards as a as to pay for that cost. So. I actually have changed on my card, well, with Day Through Time, the only one. I changed, well, no, Tassiger has Delve too. Yeah, that's right. Um, I changed the reminder text to read that. Now, to do that, you know, normally, you, you, you know, all you do is just rem take the reminder text out, and then you put in parentheses. And one of the awesome things is if you type parenthesis, it thinks you're typing reminder text. <laughs> this is reminder text. Love it. It'll automatically italicize for you. Um, so a lot of that stuff is already there. Some of the other cool things you want to see is things like this. When you type flashback, you'll then be left with your cursor right after it to be able to put in the cost. Ah. And it'll actually add that in, you know. And it's some of them, uh, let me try to think of something that, there are some things that, uh, Keywords that have a, I can't think of any offhand, but keywords that have a cost after them that whose reminder text for bolster. Oh, bolster's not in this one because it's brand new. Um, but bolster, if you read bolster, it says bolster two. You know, and the reminder text says place two plus one plus one counters on. Rampage. There we go. Perfect. So rampage one. So if we started, it's got this just blank number, and it's got this thing that says plus plus with number number. If we type one, the reminder text automatically updates to gets plus one plus one until end of turn, blah 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 for rampage. Thank you, Jake. Perfect. Hey, no problem. So a lot of those are there. Now, sometimes I've run into an issue where I was typing in something with flashback or and, and it had an alternate cost, like 
you know, flashback sack creature kind of thing. And I couldn't get it to work. Um, so one of the things I had to resort to is our friend open bracket, close bracket. Oh, that was it. There was something I was typing that it, it, that it was interpreting um, text that shouldn't been interpreted as text as the cost. Ah, uh, that's right. Um, and so you ha I had to escape it by using the open or the close bracket. It's backwards. The close bracket, you know, whatever, open bracket. Okay? And that'll escape it if it's stuck in this cost area. And you don't have to turn off the reminder text or whatever. You still like it. Mm. So, one thing is lots of reminder texts. Um, some of them I keep, some of them I don't. Um, most of them I keep because they're useful. Um, some of them I don't. Um, some of them are surprisingly not there. You know, like, hey, wrong, wrong button. I do want to see really, really quickly, because they didn't do this back early in Magic's history, banding. Um, ban well, yeah, let's finish this first. So, Cycling does have, have reminder text, but doesn't. Huh. So, you'll have to fake it. I faked it for Eternal Dragon. Um, mm -hmm. Banding. Banding. Oh, yeah. oh, God. That's so much text. It's banding. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, uh, that's reminder text. Uh, again, if you run into trouble where things aren't looking the way you want, escape them with the brackets. They should be okay. If not, right-click it, you can up and turn it off, and then type it yourself. Uh, again, if you want to turn on some bold or italics yourself, you actually got that up at the top. Uh, up here, you know, you can do the bold italics yourself if you want. But that should be it for making, you know, for, uh, for pretty much for creating cards. Um, now, one thing I do want to make a note of, uh, when, we t when I showed you the, this, you go, not that, not that either, it's gone, uh, I created a, you know, a dual art, or a full art dual land. Um, that's not the way the card looks, um, but everyone can look at that card and see what it does, mm -hmm. especially if they know what a dual is. Um, and so it's a nice place to uh, alter the card. Um, now, generally, that's something you want to think about. Before you, you know, before you go into this, whether you want to have alt art or not, uh, I personally chose to have no alt art. Every every piece of art I chose for my cube was all official art. Um, it may not be the most commonly associated art. Like I chose a lot of vintage masters art because it's oh, yeah. a lot better. Like like the, the power nine themselves look ugly, except for ancestral recall. Mm -hmm. The power nine themselves look ugly, um, and like like the new moxes by Volk and Volga are fantastic. Um, and the new the new Lotus by Vulcan is fantastic. Jeez, yeah, not um, kidding. So I chose the Anna Crypt. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go on. So, um, so you you know take care of choosing your art. You know again, uh, name your artist. It's always good. Um, be careful with the altars. They're they're you know it's a good place to put them in. You know things like full arts, but you don't want to always go full art pond. You know all full arts. You know maybe a full art lightning bolt. Probably sure. Yeah. Um, I think people get that. Probably get that, but, you know, err on the side of caution. But again, here's also where you can show creativity. You can also, don't have to follow my route and choose official art. You can go find whatever art you want. Um, now, if you do that again, I recommend one thing. Give the artist credit. That's all, that's all I recommend. So, um, I think that's about it for, for uh, creating cards. It's got everything else on my list. Um, Again, if you have questions, put them in the comments. We'll we'll get to them eventually. Sure. And uh, we'll be right back with printing. All right, we're back. We're ready to do printing. Now, while we're away, I went ahead and prepared the the us for printing. Um, you know, to do those lands we need. You know, four of each of those special lands that we need um, for micro sealed. So we're going to print those. And as we're about to find out. Magic, uh, as I may mentioned actually when we did uh, when we did the sheets, Magic set it up prints in sheets of nine. So every time you print, because the sheets are expensive, mm. you always want to print nine. Always, you know. Otherwise, you're just going to waste a section of your sheet. Print something, yes. anything. Um, seriously, uh, that's one reason I have so many tokens. Is I've actually like used 
um, some tokens to fill in sheets to, and I actually have some extra lands, but I've used those to fill in sheets where I needed less than nine. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Is it two brass burn willows in Evolved Wilds, or is it four each? It's two I, each. Oh, it's two each? Okay, I, I see four up there. I, I'm Right, two for each player. Oh, for each play. Don't! 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 Okay. Right, Jay forgets that he doesn't just play magic by himself, even though that's what his <laughs> decks look like. Oh my goodness, my solidarity deck is just solitaire. Anyway. <laughs> so, even though Jay likes playing magic by himself, Aww. we actually play with two people, so yeah. we need two sets of lands yeah. for each player, or Sorry. one set of land for each player. So we're going to put eight lands. And since we're printing eight lands, we need one more land, we need to print something else, so I look at my, my list of tokens, or things I need to print. Well, I don't want to print any more lands, because I like printing lands in batches of five. I yeah. like having my basic lands all match. Therefore, I look at tokens. Now, my choice here is a horror, and the reason my choice is a horror... Mm. Oh, God! No. <laughs> the reason it's a horror is because, in my cube, horrors are produced one at a time. Um, when I print tokens, I also like to print tokens in a multiple of what they come out in. Mm -hmm. You know, if they come out one at a time, I generally put five or ten in there. Most of them is ten, depending on what it is. Um, horrors are very hard to get, so there's only three of them in there. Um, but I can see a way of getting four through some graveyard recursion and whatnot, so we're going to up it to four, because it's a convenient, you know, it's a convenient one-up to throw in there. So that's why we're printing a horror. So we're going to print nine cards. Now, if you notice, I've got just the nine cards in its own separate section called print, um, but that's not necessary. One of the things I like to do is do it this way um, because it keeps track of what you're printing. And one of the nice things is we can look at, if I'll open up uh, reprints, there's probably some left. So here's the reprints I did for those broken cards. Mm. Now when we print, let's go ahead and show that. When we print, we need to not print the entire set. We're going to print sheet by sheet. Because the sheets alike can get messed up in the printer, mm -hmm. Um, they may not be fed, they might get fed out, you know, sometimes the printer will print just a little bit on the page and spit it out like a really mean, demonic bastard. <laughs> um, we only want to print one at a time, just to be wanna... sure everything's okay. Yeah. Uh, furthermore, we don't really want to stack those sticky sheets, well, they're not sticky face up, but they're actually, they kind of are. <laughs> um, you know, we don't want to stack them in the printer to have them fed, that's just leading to trouble. We want to, we want to do one sheet at a time. That being so, that being the case, we always do a custom selection, and we always select nine cards. Now, the first one's easy, we just count to nine, you know, but after we start counting to nine, we have to start remembering where we are. And actually, I probably, that's probably eight. Yeah, that's eight. Fortunately, it counts for us, because we can't. Um, so we, we select nine, you know, that's what we want to do. Um, but then, you know, after we print them, you know, we need to remember where we are. Now, this one I didn't happen to do it because I've gotten good at remembering where I was. But one of the nice things is if we, once you've printed a successful set, if you've got this all in a reprint section copied from another section, mm. you then just come in and delete the cards. And it'd be like, okay, those are printed, done, my cue's good. So now I'm just going to print these nine. And just count to nine again. Right? And print those. So. That's why I advocate doing a reprint or a print section. Um, you can do it just straight from here and remember where you are as you go down the list. Um, you know, I did that for one of the colors and I ended up with, I believe, two Liliana of the Veils because of it. <laughs> um, I think is the, the result of that. Um, yes, she's that good and worth it, but the cubes are singleton and even she can't break that rule. Um, so... I, I kind of like the the reprints method. Uh, since I'm printing just one, you know just these new cards, I'm definitely going to use just a reprints. I can actually, since there's just nine cards, print the entire set. Now, printing. Well, first let's do a print preview and see what they look like. We are we're going to do the entire set. We could select them, but yeah, there's only nine. Mm -hmm. We do not want to check that box. I mean, we could, but we don't. We that don't just want wastes space, right? It wastes space. Um, and I think, actually, it might actually make it so that you only get uh, six on a page. Ooh, ooh. I think you might only get six on a page doing this. Whoa, 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 whoa. wrong button, wrong button. We don't want to do that. 
Mm. Oh no, you get online, but it kind of wastes the page. And it actually, it's not just that it wastes the page, wastes space on the page. It actually makes our job harder. And we'll see why in cutting. Because um, what we really want. Now, I mean, if you were in, in perfectionist mode, okay, remember, we're doing, you know, non-perfectionist cube. You know, if you're doing the perfectionist, you might want to put space around it so you can give yourself some extra room for trimming. I don't recommend it. Um, I recommend, I don't know, printing the, well, well don't, don't, don't print, preview. No print space around the cards. And that's going to line up the cards edge to edge. And that's actually going to make our job a lot easier later. Mm -hmm. A lot easier later. So now we see all nine cards here, and we can easily just print them. And in fact, um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to print this page, and then I'm going to then I'm going to continue talking. So we're going to print this. We're going to print this to my office jet. Now I recommend that you trick your printer into believing it's photo paper and that it's in best quality. Now both of these settings are, are essential because most modern printers choose their DPI based on those settings. Uh, my printer here puts these at 600 DPI if I choose best and photo settings. If I choose best in regular paper I think I only get 300 DPI. So going photo paper is essential. Uh, no it's not photo paper. Um, yes you could put in some of your some of you might have transparency settings. I tried the transparency setting and I didn't like it. Um, it looked faded, uh, they don't put a lot of ink on the page, and they just don't look very good. Um, I recommend photo paper. Mm -hmm. um, be, but, since we do do photo paper, it does mean we're gonna, there's going to be a lot of ink on the page, so we're going to have to leave it in the printer and not touch it right away or we're going to get smears. And in fact, I'll show you one thing that can happen on, because it happened to True Name. Poor True Name. Poor guy. Um, so we're going to hit print. We, uh, that should everything be good. Print. Now hopefully my thing is printing. Usually at this point I would jump up and go and make sure that the, the printer in the other room is actually printing. But I'm going to keep talking. Um, first, who is the guy I just mentioned that was poor guy? True uh, name. True name. Poor true name. Thank you. Hey, give me half the stack and I'll, I'll help you find it. There we go. Thank you. Hey, buddy. All right. So, true name here. I picked him up, picked up the sheet without uh, without letting it dry. So I'm going to try to carefully put this in here. There you go. Now, if you look right above the corner, right above the mana symbols, you see that it's actually pink. It might look white to you, but it's actually pink. If you actually look at the card carefully, you can actually see my thumbprint because that's my thumb. Mm. Um, I stuck my thumb on the edge of it, and a good chunk of the ink came up with it. I mean, you can actually even see ridges from my thumbprint, like literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that the, you can't see it as well on camera. At least I don't think you could. You probably couldn't see it on camera, but in real life, you really can. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna pop the top out of the sleeve just really quickly, if you don't mind. Uh, not sure that actually makes it easier. Oh, let me get the light on that. Yeah, you All see right. that there against the black background, that white spot. That's that's the part that he's on about. Right. So I mentioned I was having problems with my printer, like, you know, feeding things. So we're going to have to fight with the printer. We're going to turn off the camera. Not yet. I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple things real quick. Yeah. And then we're going to go get the printer going. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll do that off the camera so you don't have to watch me fight getting the printer working. Uh, one thing I want to mention about printing, um, is, other than that, uh, is printing double face cards. Now, Always print double face cards by themselves. So I'm going to open up a double. I'm going to grab a double face card. No, when you say by themselves, you mean only, only that with, card or only, only with, with other, other double face yeah, cards? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I printed all three of the double face cards in my cube together. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to start with modern style. Sure. So because the rest of your this is this is why we need why we need to print them by themselves. If I, if I change, well, yeah, here we go. So, let's delete that card. Right. So we've got Garrick here, and he's a double fish card. Mm -hmm. But he's in a set with modern card, modern art cards. Now, for some reason, the printer, or the program, doesn't know how to rotate 
double face cards correctly when they're with others. Oh god. When they're with others, they get they they end up looking like that. Okay? That is not how we really want Garrick Relentless looking. I don't think. I mean, I'm down with ghetto, or excuse me, with, with non-perfectionist cubing, but I think that's outside my like desired desires, you know. Oh yeah, you're not. That's not quite. That's that's outside my my error tolerance. So, to print double face cards, you put them in their own section, and you go back over here to style, and one should already be set to double face cards because it's a double face card, and then click use for all cards, or when you press new. Choose double face cards. Now that we're all double face cards, we should be, we should be good. Aha! And now we're good. There we go. And when you print double face cards, it's stupid. It says, I'm going to print the card just up by itself. I don't, I can't realize, I mean, you can put multiple double face cards together. Whoa, whoa, whoops, that was, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I want this. So we can, uh, oh, I got it. Close, Close the, the preview, preview, I guess. Uh. So, we can print multiple. Well, we'll just copy Garrick here. Paste him in. All right, and we're going to preview. Um, and we can see we get multiple copies here. Now, for some reason, the program goes, well, I'm not smart enough to actually make them touch, first of all. Nor am I smart enough to go, well, you know, this is just a card here, and this is just a card here. And I can go with my nine card grid and get, you know, Four four double faced cards on a sheet. No, it just gets you. It just gets six. So double faced cards kind of suck. You can only get six. Um, Wait for the next patch, right? I don't even think that's gonna fix it. Maybe. So that's what you gotta do with double faced cards. Sucks, but you do. That being said, um, other than that, printing. You know, you have to fight with your printer sometimes, which was what I'm going to go do now. Um, good luck with that. Hopefully you don't have to fight with it as much as I have fought with mine. And so I'm going to get this printed and then we will look at a sheet and then we'll get to the next section. Alright. Alright. Stop fighting with my printer. <laughs> um, we got an excellent printed page here as I hope you can see. It's, it's quite excellent. I'll get, a, I'll get a little more light on it so you can see how pretty it is. Mm -hmm. Now, you, one of the things you won't notice, actually, well, if you can uh, plug in the other light. Yeah. Uh Hitting it right now. Red one find. second. Um, there is one thing I want to. Oh, there is one flaw I do want to point out. Yeah, that you won't see on the camera, but you can see on the cards if you look carefully. Um, and this is something I haven't figured out a way to overcome. It's part of the nature of this not being photo paper and absorbing the ink. Mm. If you look carefully, you won't be able to see this on camera. I'm almost oh, certain. okay. Um, but you might. If you look here, especially on this one, there are oh. vertical lines. Yeah, I'm not sure how easily that can be seen. If you can try to zoom in on one particular card. So if you look on what for you, I guess, is about to be, I apologize for disorienting everyone, uh, look on the right side of that card. You see how there's that white line, that Means vertical white, side. actually, well, it's both. There, there's one right well, there's one, there. Yeah, there's one on both yeah, sides. Yeah, you're right. You can see more than so, one. Those lines come from the rollers. Those are physically, you know, the rollers mm -hmm. pushing the paper through. And I have, I have no solution. Um, if you're using a better quality printer than me, that's awesome. Um, the good yeah. news is, oh, oh, yeah, sorry, you were about to say... Um, the thing is, I'm, again, fairly fine with it. They're not super noticeable, and when they're in sleeves, it's even less noticeable. Um, these are particularly egregious. I think it's because my printer is, like we mentioned, is kind of acting up. Mm. Uh, I have put it through a lot of work, so, you know. I just wanted to point that out, is that there are, there are some lines. Again, I don't know how to get beyond that. That's something, that, you know, usually I'm trying to tell you how to do things perfectly. Yeah. If you want to do them right. I don't know how to solve that one. And for two-thirds of your cards, there's not really an issue. Right. Um, but it's there. You should be aware of it. Sorry. Yeah, you know, if you got a better printer than me, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That was another thing I forgot to mention during materials, because we didn't actually have them physical. Mm -hmm. You're going to need ink. Oh, yeah. You're going to need a lot of ink. Um, again, not trying to endorse product, but I use an HP. 
HP has XL ink cartridges. Those are highly recommended. I basically went through one. Well, about half of, you know, of each color, you know, red, green, or red, yellow, or magenta, cyan, and uh, yellow, mm -hmm. and black. I went through half of each. Well, not the black. I actually had used very little. I'm still in my starter black. Oh, wow, um, nice. But uh, colored, I, I'm, I used about half of an XL cartridge, just to give you an idea. Um, just okay. to give you an idea. So, now we're ready to cut this thing. We've let it dry. We're not going to really have any worries about true naming this thing. Um, it should be good to go. Uh, one thing I did want to mention well, before we get on to cutting about printing. One last note about printing um, is, some people might not know, but uh, you, you need to be careful which direction you put the paper in. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to know which direction the paper is going to be printing in. Uh, most inkjet printers, you put them in face down. And by face down, you mean the, 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 the side of the, the foil. The, yeah, the, the side that's got the transparency mm -hmm. down. Face, that, that side down. Um, so the, the sticker back that you'd peel up facing up towards you. That's right. Because um, most of them pull them like this. They pull them forward and then bend them up and print them that, you know, the head runs this way. So that's why you want to put them face down. Now, so... You know, if you don't know, don't test it with this with this sheet. They're expensive. Just stick a, you know, a regular sheet of paper in, you know, right on one side so you know which one you put, you know, right up and then mm -hmm. put put it in facing up and print it out and see which one it is. So just know which direction you're going to put it in before you do. Uh, so you don't waste a sheet. And then I know that seems obvious to most people. I just want to point it out for people who may not think about this stuff. Um, I'm absent-minded enough, that could very well be me. Exactly. And then the other thing is, you don't want to put more than one sheet in at a time. Um, you want to put one sheet in on a small stack of regular copy paper. You don't want to put one in blank, you know, or with nothing else. The printer, I mean, trust me, I've had enough problems fighting this thing, trying to get it to suck them in, you know, to pull them in, to feed them. And the best way to do it is to, uh, is to have it on a small stack of copy paper. That being said, I think that that covers printing pretty well. I mean, if you got a better solution, you know, like printing with other places, that'd be awesome. Um, I don't know how much that costs or whether they do it with, you know, unsolicited, you know, with, with art you don't own. So there's always issues. But that's printing. That's what I did. Um, hope you don't have issues with your printer like I did. But let's start cutting. Now, we're going to cut this whole sheet apart. And we're going get to our, get our nine cards to go. Now, Paradoxically, I'm going to turn this light off because it's actually giving us too much light in the direction we want. Mm -hmm. What we want instead is to turn these lights on and put them down here underneath the blade. And then we're going to line up the page to where we want it. Now, before I cut this, do you want to like zoom in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can get this a bit better. All right. That's pretty good. Now, if you look carefully along this edge, uh, you'll notice, you, you, you know, hopefully it'll be obvious what the, the, the flashlights are for. Uh -huh. When the flashlights shine, they shine through the paper underneath the, where, you know, underneath the, the, the blade, and they show a shadow up here. Ah. So if we look where there is a shadow and where there's not a shadow, we know exactly where our blade is going to cut. That's no, that's there is no yeah. guessing. There is no lining up with a ruler, no measuring. We use the shadow to tell us exactly where that blade is going to fall. Can you see that on the camera? Uh, I don't actually... Why don't you try to zoom in on one end real quick, just yeah. so that people can just really get... Just be absolutely positive Be absolutely sure, sure yeah. they can see the shadows, because that's how... That's the secret to this cutting method. I discovered this very early, thankfully, um, as a, 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 a quick hint to, to as a way to... Um, if you actually should come over from here, you, you'll be around the blade looking oh. this way. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'm coming over there. You can see it from, from here. Uh, and then I'll, I'll jump to the other side. See how the paper has two separate colors? There's where the light is and there's against the board. Uh, when I come around on this side. So, I almost bought a paper cutter that had a laser pointer that, that you know, goes across where the blade will come down. And that almost sold me. But then I saw the arm and the higher quality of this one and went with this one. 
And I'm so glad I thought of my own better laser pointer, basically. Because you could see exactly where the blade is going to fall. Um, That's brilliant. Thank you. And now you see why I kind of waited to, to tell you what it was for. Ta-da! Ta-da! And I came up with that on myself. I'm very proud of myself. And I'm very proud that I came up with it early. Like, very early. So, now that we've lined it up, I'm going to double check to make sure we're lined up. We're actually not. Um, yeah, I might have knocked it off a little bit there. Whatever. I, I, didn't, I didn't line it up perfectly when I did oh, okay. for, de for demonstration. I just like throw it in the rough area. Fair enough. So now we're lined up perfectly. We want to put gentle pressure. And we want to put the gentle... If you have this model, you, you put gentle pressure here and here. That's going to divide the pressure across. And then you want to cut the thick piece. Now, one of the things about cutting is... Cutting like a lot of things, or the key to cutting like a lot of things is no hesitation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no hesitation. You want to go in and just fully cut it, pull the handle all, well this one you don't want to pull it all the way down because that's how you lock it, but do a full cut in one go. Don't try to do this slow, careful cutting because if you do that, you're going to end up pulling your paper. Mm -hmm. um, the best way to do it is just do one quick, careful stroke, just like that. And you get a perfectly straight, perfectly cut mm. piece that, you know, way to go. No problems. So then, we yeah. advance it. And you can actually use the, the diamonds, I guess. You do. That's exactly, that's exactly how you cut these apart. Now, up here, I kind of have to eyeball it. And if you actually look, I missed. I often miss on the top and the bottom by just a hair, and it's always outside the the border. I don't know if Jake. Can... Uh, yeah, let me let me get Why that back down and, for you. Yeah, get down there and look at that real quick. You'll see that there's, I don't know if it's even a millimeter's Actually. worth, half a millimeter maybe. Against my finger, you can see a just little a bit. Yeah, just a teeny bit. Just a hair. Bit. Um, that often happens, and you know that's okay because we're gonna fix that in trimming. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to be perfect. But when we're cutting cards apart, we do want to be cl as close to perfect as possible because when we cut plus on one card, we're cutting minus. minus on another yes. card. Yes. But we do have these diamonds, these these curves, and that makes it pr really easy to line them up perfectly. See, he's trying to get it so that it fits in along the line and tie so. Right there, in the center, and then this diamond, this star shape, right through its center. Yep. And then, and then one so on. Press. And, yep, so forth. It drops. And we go to the next one. And once you get some, prep, you know, practice, this actually goes pretty quick. You know, like, as you can see, I'm pretty good at getting them lined up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You just rotate them around. Now I suppose you could do them upside down um, so that you don't get your fingers in the ink, but if you follow the advice and let them dry, this shouldn't be a problem. You'll feel them tacky. They'll feel tacky to the touch, just don't put a lot of pressure on them. So now, now that we've got them all separated, we're just gonna we're gonna separate all the cards, you know, in each row. So we just do the same thing. And this way, and here, we've got a similar situation that we got up to the top where we just kinda gotta eyeball the edge. You know, hope that we're hitting the, you know, hope we're hitting, we're probably going to come around a little on the outside. Yeah, we did. A little on the outside, but again, that's okay. Because again, we're going to trim the cards later. The important part is when we don't come in a little on the, on these. Because cutting cards apart, again, plus on one is minus on another. And that plus on the other one's coming off anyway, so it's really minus on both. Well, not minus, but, you know, just minus border overall. Mm. Let me swing it around. All right. So and now we just repeat that with the others real quick. I'm going to do this quickly as I can. You may be able to notice he doesn't need to uh, bear down. He doesn't need to put his hand on the what's that called? The not the hammer, the plate. I don't it's know. Holding it down. That sounds good. Plate sounds good. Plate. He doesn't need to apply any pressure, so his fingers are in actual no harm. No danger. Yeah. And then last row.
So that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually pretty quick as you can see. Um, I often will print a several stacks. Um, and because I'm back and forth with the printer, I actually don't have enough time to sit and cut a full sheet out. So I'll often print out like four or five and then make a little stack here and then cut out four or five pages at a time. And the is pretty quick. You get a big pile of these. That's kind of fun. Um, you know, you get to you know, toss them around after you do several piles. Um, but again, again, there's not a whole lot to cutting. Um, other, there's two secrets to cutting. Mm -hmm. The first one, flashlight. the flashlights. Lighting from underneath will tell you exactly where it goes. And again, that's something else you can't get from a non-guillotine cutter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely can't do it with anything else. So, again, do that. Um, and, and the next is this, you know, fast cuts. No hesitation. None of that. Um, one other key, uh, one thing you want to do, it'll be more important in trimming than it is here. Here, because it's it's very, you know, it's fairly thin, you know, I mean, it's not it's not thin, but it's not the card. So it's not as thick as a card. Um, so you do want to go just pretty much fast through these. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, straight down. One thing we're going to find when we get to the card, and we're, and we're shaving slivers off, when we, we're, we're going to be shaving some slivers off, um, likely. And when we do, you're going to want to put some leftward pressure to make sure the blade sits as tight against the bottom blade as possible, all the way down. Hmm. You know, there's a slight chance it can come down and be not tight, and it doesn't make for, it makes for a semi, or is not as clean of a cut as you could have. So if you just, as you're going down, just the slight, it doesn't take much, just the slightest bit of pressure to the left as you're coming down. And if you're right-handed, it's natural, you're just grabbing it and pushing it a little as you're going down. You just put a little bit of tension there, and then remember, no hesitation. That's right. And that's it. Now, what's next on the line? Well, do you want to do the trimming of the corners and nope. whatnot? Not yet? Trimming, you, you can't trim until you put it on the card. Oh, yes, I see. You don't know what to trim until you're on the card. All right, then. So now we got to wipe, wipe foils. So we're going to have some... Acetone. We're going to have fun with acetone. <laughs> now, so, we'll be back in a second. All right. All right, here we are. Going to learn about how to wipe foils. Uh, I'm going to start by teaching you the perfectionist way. Uh, the way you can do to make perfect foils and prevent yourself from having damaged card backs. Yeah. Again, I don't recommend this because of time and you're going to see why. Uh, first thing you want to do is take some painter's tape. I didn't do this, but take some painter's tape, tape down the edges. This takes too dang long. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'd already almost be done with the other way. That's how much better it is. Wow. Seriously. Yeah, no, I believe you. Um, like, in max uh, imperfection mode, I'd be done by now. Mm -hmm. So now we've got the edges protected. Um, the likelihood... Now, the reason the foils get messed up is acetone has a really good chance of slipping under the edge of the card mm. and gluing itself up on the back and then destroying the ink on the back side of the card, making a mess rubbing itself against the side, just destroying the back of your card. But it's the acetone getting under. When we when we tape it off like this, and I taped it off very roughly, just because, um, we we reduce the chance of acetone getting on the other side. Uh, so then we can just use our little bowl here. Mm -hmm. We want to get, use our little, again, our little uh, little bottle, because we want, did you know? Wow, that's not much at all. Not yeah. much at all. We just get just a little tiny bit at a time. Acetone, uh, evaporates very quickly. If mm -hmm. we get put pour more in there, we're actually just going to end up wasting it to evaporation. You're going to have more fumes. You don't want a lot of them at the time. This is not my actual rag. Uh, that would be. Wow. We're in... Well, that's a there rag. Is. There it is. There it is. So, we grab our rag. I'm going to grab the other end because I know this other end hasn't been used. And then we will. You know, since we're doing this carefully, you know, we're going to get a decent amount of acetone on there, but not soaking wet. Just, just damp. And we start in the middle, and we just gently rub. And at first, it doesn't look like it's going to do anything, but if you just, just have patience, uh, it'll just start go. coming up. Now, 
when you're doing it the careful way, you want to start in the center and use careful circles mm -hmm. and then be ultra careful when you get to the edges. Your goal is to try to clean everything on here up to the painter's tape. This way. Now, depending on the amount of acetone you put on your rag depends on how much elbow grease you need to put in. If you really soak your rag, you're not, you're, you're, it's just going to come right off and you aren't going to put in any elbow grease at all. Uh, there's two drawbacks to that. One, you're soaking, it, you're soaking your rag in acetone, so you're using a lot more acetone. But acetone's cheap. It's one of the few things in this project that is. <laughs> um, and the other is you're using a lot of acetone, which means you greatly increase the chance of getting some on the backside. Mm -hmm. Now, since we're trying to do this one good perfectly, we we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna use a lot of acetone. We're gonna use elbow grease instead. Now I've got most of it on there. There's a little bit of red, but that's okay. Now we peel up the painter's tape and have the really hard part. Now, if you're smart, you had put the painter's tape on just the extreme outside edge, but doing that greatly increases your risk of getting it on the other side. Mm -hmm. So, well, what we're gonna do now is, you know, so, but again, this is, that was me just being lame, sticking it on there. You probably want it a lot closer than I've done. But we're just showing the general idea because I hate this method anyway. Yeah. Then, we get Q-tips. Because if we use a rag, we are guaranteed to get it on the back. Even with painter's tape, we got a little on the back. Just a bit, yeah. Just a so tiny you're right, bit. You're right. Almost did not noticeable. You won't see it on the camera. But we got a little bit under, you know, a little bit came under there, even with the painter's tape, even being way out on the edge. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's craziness. I, I think it's my waste of time. But anyway, so we get our Q-tip. Go ahead and douse it however want you, much you want, and then use it in the same way. Except you've then got to go over small, tiny areas and keep scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. And there's no such thing as elbow grease with the... And there's no elbow yeah. grease. And if you look here, I've done very little scrubbing. I've made just very little effort. But look how much mm -hmm. is already on the Q-tip. You know, one third of this end of the Q-tip is already useless to us. And I've, I've made that much progress on the foil. I mean, it's, 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 it's a complete farce. Um, but if you want perfect perfect ones you just go through the whole thing but then you're gonna have to use some because this is actually a bad example but on most if you the the borders the edges of all of the frames like around the name plate and around the edge of the you know art and then around the edge of the text box all those things oh, yeah. those are usually on with ink that's extra hard to get off mm. that you need to actually scrub it off and it's, scrubbing it off with a q-tip is just kind of ridiculous so we could spend the next five minutes scrubbing this off but <laughs> but we're not going to. Thank you. Because that's a waste of time. We're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna finish that one later. Because I'm just gonna go with a fresh boil and show you the quick method, the dirty method. Well, there's a, there's an in-between method, which is actually kind of what we show. You know, I'll discuss before I do the quick and dirty. This is how I actually do it because I don't care about the backs method. So We've seen enough future bows, we're gonna see a death frenzy. <laughs> Just because. So, we got a death frenzy. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rag, and we are gonna be ruthless with our rag. Now, the way I do it is I don't care about acetone, and I don't care about the back. I know I'm gonna mess up the back a little bit, so I don't care if I mess up the back a lot. And you, they're in sleeves anyway, so. They're in sleeves anyway, yeah. no one sees you. So, you can, just dab your thing and use the same amount of acetone I recommended for doing that. And use a little bit of elbow grease and things will turn out great. Or, or, you can soak your rag in acetone. Go across the whole foil, apply equal pressure. And in no time, I mean, wow, look at that. So as you can see, the <laughs> edges like to stay. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit of elbow grease and they disappear real quick. And so if you're healthy with your acetone 
Not afraid of elbow grease, not afraid of messing up the back. Yeah, after that this. That card is wiped. It's not complete. There's one thing we have to do, and we're going to do it in a second. But it's wiped. We'll look at the back. Oh. It's not as bad as you might think, but yeah. it's definitely damaged. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. It's damaged. But again, I don't care if it's damaged. <laughs> That's why it's so fast. So, or I do it that fast. So, look at that. Like, in the time literally it took me to tape the other one down, I'd wipe You're the done. other one. Yeah. Now, here's the next step. If you, you might not have seen, be able to see, but now if we look it up close, I don't know. It is a foil, so you're having trouble. There is a slight film mm -hmm. on, the, on the foil where there's still some remaining ink sitting on there. Now, so what we do is we take, usually, a, I usually use a separate rag because I don't want it to get heavily covered in ink. I want it to always be clean and it's easier to use. And then I use this separate rag and then we come over to our acetone again. And this time, instead of, all we want is to get the, t the rag damp. Mm -hmm. Just touch the acetone. I don't know if you can see this. You just want to touch it so that, the, so that the tip of your rag is just damp. You then go in the same direction all the way down the card. In one, you know, all the way down one direction. Now usually, I don't, I don't, well, there we go, sorry, let me, let me repeat that so you can see that. Now, I am having to tilt this because I can only see the, the, the ink when the light is shining in a certain direction. Uh, but it is definitely there and it needs to be done and can be seen. But when you just dampened the rag with just a tad, you know, you just need a touch, you just need to go over with a light rag like that and it's going to all be gone. Mm -hmm. And it's all gone right now. You just have to go over the card once, and when you're doing that, you can also go over any places where you might have missed the border. This time I didn't. Um, and there's no mess ups, and this card is done. Ready to go. Ta-da! In, in just a few minutes, we got a whole card, you know, a minute or less, you've got a whole card already done. Oh, wait, there is a little border that I need to get right there. Done. Ready to go. Messed up back. Done. In less time than it took to tape this one down. And it would have taken even more time to tape it down if I taped it down properly. Mm -hmm. So. Time-wise, way, 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 way better. Can multiply that by, you know, a thousand cards. And now think about doing this a thousand times. Jeez. Don't do it. <laughs> so, that's wiping cards. Um, there was one other thing I was going to mention about wiping cards. Oh, yes, the damage card. Now, I don't know if you can see these on the camera. But I'm going to put this up here. Yeah, you can see that. Now, if you look here on this card, there is a stippling along the edge of this foil. Now, I thought that that stippling would make this foil unusable. Now, I don't know what I think what causes it is, is acetone getting underneath the foil layer Ooh. and slipping inside the card a little bit. Is what I think causes it. I don't know. That's just me guessing. If I'm wrong, don't mock me for it. Uh, but it causes this stippling. Now, I thought that would make this card unusable, but it turns out when I tested it and I put a, a, put a, a sticker on it, and you can't actually see that through the, through the sticker. So when you get these, and you will, and I can't figure out how to prevent them. That was something I haven't been able to figure out. They just seem to happen. Um, no matter how careful I was, they seem to happen. I mean, well, if you're going in like ultra careful mode, I don't think you'll see them. Um, but no matter how careful I was, and even in my media mode with like mostly just scrubbing, scrubbing, I still got them. So that, just accept them. You won't be able to see them. Now, if we look at this other part side of the card, though, I don't know if you can see this as carefully, but if you look right down here, that is the foil actually lifted up when I was scrubbing, and acetone got deep underneath and actually separated to the point where there's now white spots showing through the foil layer that and it's actually kind of much wider than you can actually probably see like when I shift it around you can see that dark area oh yeah that dark area will show through the sticker so if you if you end up with a wound like that you're not gonna be able to use it now fortunately this is the only one that I've done this to so it's not likely it only happened this one time um, but it can happen but mostly I just want to show you that this is nothing to worry about it doesn't show through. So, that's wiping foils. Again, I recommend crazy man mode. Again, you saw me do it in like, I don't know, you've got a counter, not me. Um, 
doesn't take long. Um, things you'll want to know. If you are crazy like me and do 300 in a day and then 400 the next day, <laughs> like without, you know, basically without stopping the whole time, your hand is going to hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably want to don't not do that. You probably want to break a lot of these like tasks that seem we'll do all of this and then do all of this. You know, you might print some, might design some cards, might wipe some foils for a couple hours. You want to take it a break. You know, also the acetone, unless you're in a well ventilated area, which I usually wasn't because I didn't really care, it will get to you and it will make you a little ditzy in the head. Um, so be in a well ventilated area, you don't want to do it for hours. Take breaks. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing is you really can't see it on my hands right now, I don't think, because there's really not a lot. Um, but one thing you're going to happen when you wipe a lot of foils is you're going to get ink all over your hands. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be all over your hands, and even the acetone's not going to take it off. Um, the shower will help. A shower and the acetone will help, but it's just going to take some days of some abrasion to come off. That's just the truth of it. I guess you could try gloves, but then you're going to deal with gloves getting messed up with ink and changing gloves, and I don't, I haven't tried gloves, I don't care. Yeah. I just let my ink, my hands get inky, and, and that was it. So that's wiping foils. So, let's go ahead and let's not even turn off the camera. Yeah. Let's, uh, well, and again, leftover, leftover acetone is not good and, like, out. So, you don't want to pour it back in a bottle, because it will evaporate very quickly. I guess this one's, like... I'm not even an 8-bit mirror, but I guess that's something you can use it for now. Yeah, it's really useless. Yeah. Um, right. I give them to my kid. I give up all these mess car messed up cards to my kid. She uses them for I don't know what. Yeah, so throwing like the, the poker throw, yeah. poker card throw? I don't know. Anyway. So, yes. now, next thing. We're going to demonstrate how we put these things on, on cards. So let's get the foil we just grabbed. Where are all of the... Where are the cards? Oh, dear. Uh, there they are. Okay. Get the cards. Now, you, my dear viewers, are lucky. I am not so lucky. <laughs> I... Putting these things on here is not super easy. Um, and I set my brain to the task of figuring out the best way to do it um, that prevents, you know, misplacement the most. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm not as smart as I like to think I am sometimes, and I went through nearly my entire box, everything but, literally everything but these nine cards, without coming up with a better solution. Nine to, out of about a thousand. Out of a thousand. Yeah. Out of a thousand cards, I have nine left to do. These nine that we printed today. And I hadn't thought of a better solution than the one I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you now so you can see what I did yeah. for these thousand. And then and we're going to see the result. And then we're going to see, you know, it'll give me a second card to deal with. You want to tell them the story or should we do that afterwards? So, or? <laughs> well, do, oh, so let me show you this and then I'll oh, tell yeah, you the yeah. story. Definitely. Let me show you the Let me show you the old school way. So now you're going to need, you might want to pick up the camera. Oh, yes. Because the way I do this is a very personal way. I just straight up put the card on my knee. Now, a lot of people do this at a desk. I tried it on, you know, doing it on my board. I found nothing was really good except for this, because this allows me actually to get close to it, have good control. All right. So I use my knee. You can do that anywhere, yeah. So then, right, am I on the screen? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So we pull the sticker off. Um, you know, the easiest way I should have shown you that, you just use your fingernail and click on the edge, you'll catch a little bit in there and it'll start to tear. Just grab it and pull it back. You'll get practice, trust me, you'll pull enough. <laughs> so then it would be to grab it like this, pull my luxurious hair out of the way, double check From to make sure... From one long hair guy to another, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> pull, double check to make sure it's face up, again, and not that it matters if they're not face up, but you know, why not? Yeah. And then... We simply line her up by eye. And this is the old way. This is the old way. And look at that. Now, I have done this, like I said, nearly a thousand times. And doing it with practice can produce perfect results. And that is. I this don't card see... is perfect. Yes. There is nothing wrong with that. That is, you wonder, well, what's wrong with your technique? Well, I'm going to do another one. 
and I'm going to intentionally mess it up a little bit to show you what's wrong with the technique. But that one is perfect to show you that I'm not terrible at this, yeah. you know, that most of my cards weren't <laughs> Actually, most of my cards come out like this because I'm actually pretty good at this, especially with the practice. So this one came out perfect, but I'm going to grab me another foil. I guess if you're going to do the messed up one, do the horror, maybe? Okay. This will be I mean, a horror. Since it's not horror number four. No, I, I won't do a horror because it will require more trimming. Oh. And tokens go in white sleeves, so broken borders on gotcha, a token gotcha. are much more noticeable. Yeah. Okay. So I won't do the horror. Okay. I'm sorry. No, it, it may it makes sense. Your reasoning makes sense. Um, I was just thinking since it was kind of box an of excess oils. one. Aha. Da 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 da. So I prepared foils in advance so you guys don't have to see me white foils. I bet you're appreciative. So let's go ahead and grab. We'll do this again. And we'll see if I can, we'll mess it up a little bit. Get out. You know, I can't, I, you know, it can't be perfect all the time. So here we go again. Oh, again. Stick a fingernail in. You know, often you, a good thing is also to press just beyond it and it'll crinkle itself up and you'll get a little fold. And then of course, when you get zoom in to see it, it doesn't do it. There we go, see it gets a little fold, slips into your fingernail crack, grab it, pull. Of course, those tricks like aren't as useful coming up. Well, I guess they might be. We'll see. We haven't we haven't tried it. We're gonna find out. So we'll do this one and we'll do this one so that it's not perfect. There we go. But but good. Good but not perfect. Okay, that's good but okay. It's good but not perfect. So uh, look carefully on each edge of this card. You will notice that on this edge, on the top, Ooh. There is a little bit of foil sticking out. Mm -hmm. You will notice on this edge there might there should be a little bit of foil sticking out. I gotcha. And if we look on the back, we got a bunch of stickers sticking out along all of the edges. Mm. The most important thing that I care about is this little bit of foil. Now this one isn't as messed up as a lot of them, but again, I've got a lot of practice, and so you know it's hard for me to mess up on purpose because it's against my nature. To mess up on purpose, but we can see that there's a little bit of foil showing. And when you stick this in a black sleeve, mm. that sticks out. So we're gonna fix that. But we're gonna fix that in trimming, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I almost want to make one worse than that, uh -huh. but I, I'm not going to. Um, For your own sanity's sake, I suppose? Right. Because I don't, you know, well, f <laughs> I want to show you what this thing is really about. I want to, what, what, you know, like what the work, I don't want to go to like the worst we can do. But, and these are just, you know, these are micro sealed cards only, so it's okay if they're not perfect. But even though those came out so well, like even the even the messed up one came out mm -hmm. well. So, once again, we try this method, but this time I'm going to... Really Intentionally go way, way off. I tried, there we go, perfect. <laughs> it's so bad, it's good. So. Now we see along this whole edge, there is a foil all the way down to about here. We see along the top edge, there is, there is foil all the way here. Mm -hmm. That is ugly. Now when we trim it, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be beautiful. <laughs> well, non-perfect beautiful, but it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. So anyway, you can see the flaw in my technique because it produces cards like this. Even though I produced, you know, I had to actually kind of try. Then again, that's practice. When you're, not, when you're doing it, you're not going to be able to do that every time. Um, so, but, now the story. All right. So, the other day, I, you know, G had brought this to me and I was thinking about this, uh, this tutorial. And so, I was taking a shower before going, to, going up to the store. Um, and I was thinking about this tutorial because Jay was thinking maybe coming over to do this tutorial then. And so I'm running through these things and one of the things I'm doing is discussing to you about, you know, the non-perfectness of the cube. And, discussing some of the issues and one of the issues and one of the, okay so one of the problems with this technique is that when we do this you think well why didn't you, why did you just accept that and press it all the way down well I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to mess one up mm -hmm. but when you press one down and pull it back up it forms a divot looking mm -hmm. thing all over the card and you can totally see it and it basically ruins the card. Yeah. You know, you're actually better off with it with this screwed up edge than you are trying to remove the card. I think you said even your Liliana was it? The Liliana had that maybe? Or maybe it was some card with Liliana on it. So maybe yeah. Snuff Out or one of those. Right, I don't remember which one it was. Yeah. Um, so but when you pull them off, they, they it just totally mess with the card. So you're better off with, with, with trimming the edges. Um, 
So I'm discussing this in my head, thinking, okay, we're gonna explain, you know, that, you know, ripping it off is, is, is just no good. And I'm discussing this, and then I see one of you people, thank you from whoever you are in the future, <laughs> commented on this video we're making right now, <laughs> to say, why don't you just pull down part of the sticker and create a tab and that way if it gets stuck it's only a little bit getting stuck well I was in the shower when I thought this and I immediately stopped everything and stood there and I actually stunned myself and then I got mad because I set my brain <laughs> 991 later to the task of solving this create a better way of putting these stickers on before the box was finished and well yes it I have to agree it did that I have well now I have six more parts <laughs> to do I had nine when it came up with the solution it waited until I'd done a thousand before it came up with a solution but we've got one so however dear viewers I haven't tried it oh uh, boy this is his pilot go at it so this will be my pilot go at it right here live on camera However, the logic is pure, is really sound. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be a winner. The basic idea is the same, but what we're gonna do, and I, I haven't tried this, so I'm gonna have to figure out like the logistics of the dexterity of doing this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel just the edge down. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna fold it down into a tab. That exposes a little bit of stickiness, enough that it's when we place it down on the card, it's going to hold the card in place, but little enough that if we get it, it's not going to have enough stick to it to actually grab the card and be unable to be pulled up without doing damage. And if we do a little bit of damage, we're going to be doing a little bit of damage to the border. So everything about this technique looks good. Let's see if it is. All right, here we go. Insert drum roll here. So already I'm finding that the tab is kind of getting in the way of alignment. So I might have to pull the tab further down than I'm thinking, but we're going to try to keep keep it where it is not for now. Ah, there's another issue. So one of the ways when I was placing this before is I could, when placing it, get it aligned, I could put, en put pressure on anywhere oh. on the card and get it to stick anywhere. And now, now it just has to be the top. I can only put pressure on the top when I get it aligned. So, positive negative. Welcome to learning <laughs> with me on, on YouTube. Uh, Do you think maybe a, a flatter surface than your leg? Oh, no, wait, wait. No, I like the leg because, again, it keeps me close. See, now we're getting to the point where the tab might be in the way. I need to adjust my dexterity. Again, we're learning this right now live. Mm -hmm. That's lined up fairly well. It's not perfect. I know that already, but it's fairly good. So now we're gonna press it tight. We're gonna see how this works. All right. Here we go. Perfection. Yeah, actually, even at the top where you said, I mean, I yep. can see a touch, I got maybe. a corner. There's yeah. a little corner right there where you can see the foil, and we're going to take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things we're going to take care of, but otherwise, perfection. It looks it looks a little like like the uh, like the cotton swab early. It looks a little tedious, but you will be perfect if you do it this you way. Will, a little more tedious, but you will have a lot less damaged cards. Mm -hmm. And here's something you're not you one thing you're going to notice is when you're doing it this way, Yes, you'll get some cards that are damaged like this, but I, I, I can show you cards that easily get dropped that go into beyond the border. And once it starts going beyond the border, it starts cutting into the picture, and we don't want that. <laughs> Let's go turn off the fan so we stop having papers fly into the middle of our video. I'm real happy for you. I'm going to let you finish. All right. And with that, I'm actually going to see if I can find it. Like, I gave Lily on. Well, I don't have any bad cards. That's what's the matter. So, are we are we still rolling? Oh yes, yes. So, you know, you, some of these these are easily fixable, but you can often get them that aren't that mm -hmm. are just too far gone. When you cut them, you'll be cutting into the actual card. 
you don't want that. That's actually going to look like sh look like crap. Yeah. We don't want that. Uh, and so you're going to have a reprint on your hand, and that's a whole other sheet. You know, a whole you know, and finding eight mm -hmm. more cards to go with it. That's right. Another foil. So the extra time taken to get this aligned is actually worth it. Trust me, from someone who has gone through a thousand of these bad boys, <sighs> I'm happy with the new technique. Um, admittedly, I've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of practice to make it a little more smooth. And but I, but you know, again, a lot of me just trying to, a lot of that time was me figuring out how to handle the tab. You know, and now that I think I can handle the tab, I, it's 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 solid. I like the technique. I recommend you try it. Um, Again, I don't have perfect uh, recommendations on how long your tab should be, because you saw me do it for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, mine looked a little, a little small, and it got a little bit in my way of aligning things. Um, but at the same time, it gave me a very small, sticky area, which is a benefit. It it prevents you from you know getting it stuck to the card as much you know as much in a way you don't want. So. Uh, doing some experiments. I do think that you want to do, do that at the very least. Fold it down to a third. You know, I suppose only a third of the card or something like that. Um, that should be at, you know, an experiment for what works best for you. Mm -hmm. um, I de definitely recommend, you know, this fold down technique. Um, I have to say that whoever commented in the future, thank you for giving me the technique, but you should have given it to me like a thousand cards ago. Um, so now we're going to trim. We're almost done. As we can see, you know, we can look at this card and be like, well, aren't we done? Well, no, we're not done. Oh, there. I'm sorry. There we are. Oh, yeah. You know, sorry. we look at this card, you know, we look at one. Well, this card's not the one we want. This one. This one. Even this one that's perfect. Well, all but perfect. You know, these. These both are like, all. well, that one's not. This one. These. These are all but perfect. Are we done? No. We got some work to do on even these. And so we're going to do that right now. So, we're going to set up our little area. All right. We need to bring back out your... Just keep it on. I'm going to set it up on camera. Absolutely, yeah. Coming right So, up. we got our friend. We need this guy back out. Flat surface. Oh, yes. Not ah. flat surface. We need guillotine. That's right, that's right. We're going to cut, we're going to trim all the things that we don't like off of here. We still haven't even gotten to the scissors that don't still, do much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't, well, we're about to. We're yeah, about to. you're right. So, you're I'm right. about to find, that's, a, that's one of the things I'm trying to find. So, I need a rag. Got, found the rag. I need my acetone. Found the acetone. So things you want to do for trimming, get trimming ready for trimming. You want your paper cutter, you want your acetone, you want a rag. Why? You'll find out. Yes. Uh, in just a moment. We want the lamp. We want the lamp. Bring the lamp in. Mm. Uh, and we want scissors. If I can find the scissors. Lamp on your left. We want the si we oh, want the lamp right that? here. Okay. And we're gonna put the lamp so ah, that yes. we can. If you'll show this. Oh yeah. It's on. Oh, I think it's... Are you charging? It no, here we go, here we go. Yeah, it's fine. We're good. Okay. So, what... I, oh, I talked about this Benny lamp already in, in, in tools, about how we want it over here on this side so that we can see see perfectly. Yes. Um, so that's where we're going to want it. Um, we've got one... You know, next one thing we're going to want that you may not expect is we're going to want preferably a white sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look over here, if you bring the camera over here, we're going to bring this white sheet of paper and we're going to put it underneath the blade. Now these cards are thick. They are not translucent, so we cannot use our flashlight trick to find out where our edge is. That's right. So we're going to have to eyeball it. So one thing that helps is by putting a white sheet on the other side so that you have high contrast mm -hmm. from what you're seeing. This will help. I'm not sure if the camera can see it very well. Yeah. But if you are very, very close to it, then yes, you can you can see the difference. Yeah, you can see through the sticker. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna trim the stick. We're gonna find out. You know, we're actually gonna find out that we trim stickers on the back. We only trim. Well, let's let's talk that up. We only trim foils on the front side because we can see we we can only see where the foils go on this side. But the best way to see where we have to trim to on the with overlap stickers is on the back. So we're gonna turn it over on the back and do that. So, but first, before we do all that, I gotta find my scissors. Scissors. You know, they're so maligned that they keep running away from me because they know ah, I hate there them. There they are. Scissors. <laughs> so, here we go. They're so, also great trim. at hide and seek. All right. Trimming. Now, the first thing we want to do with trimming is we want to take all of these edges that show the foil off first. Now, if we notice, this one's actually got a little bit of sticker over the edge. We're not going to even. Can you see that? Yes, yes. 
So it's got a little bit of sticker over the edge. We're not going to be concerned about this on our first cut. We're actually going to get some. We don't. We're not even concerned about. It. We're actually going to line up on the corner here, even though we're going to cut it off again in a in a second. We're not going to worry about it. Our concern is getting a nice clean line that shaves off just a little bit of this card. Now, this takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of eyeballing, and a lot of light. That's why we have the light right here in front. Shining a lot, shining right down on the edge. Now this again, um, we don't have, uh, we can't see through the card, so we can't use that that neat shadow trick. So again, we look, try to look straight down and use the white as a um, contrast, contrast yeah. to be able to see exactly where we're cutting. Mm -hmm. um, then, with the cards, you are going to want to press down. You know, the paper, if you know what you're doing. You know, you don't have to as much. These you do because it will actually shift sh shift the card a little bit. And again, the secret, no hesitation. Now, when the blade is perfectly clean and ready to go and sharp like it is and it stays sharp, it just takes off these slivers like nobody's business. And we look back at the card and we see, hey, look, there's no foil anymore. It's a little bit, you know, you can see that it's thinner. But again, once we put those in sleeves, they don't matter. So we've got that edge taken care of. Now, if you notice carefully, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little tiny corner of foil showing. We're not going to worry about that at this stage. All right. We're just worrying about the ones that are on the just cleaning up the foil on the edges at this stage. Now, there's a little bit on the top side, so we're going to shave that off. Just like that. Now, when you're shaving off, the usually from the top side, they'll usually pop down on the on the... The paper, this is the dual purpose of the paper. The paper not just shows as contrast, it's also going to show as a garbage yeah. dis uh, area, disposal area, for two reasons. One, um, the, the chips are just going to fall there naturally. But two, um, when we flip it over, we're going to start cutting off the things that are sticky. And so we're going to pull them off, be pulling them off the blade, and we're going to stick them to the paper. So that's what that's for. Right now we don't have to do that because we're at the front. So now, the front's clear. We see a little tiny bit of foil there, but we'll take care of that in a second. So now we flip it over to the back. And if we look carefully, we see all the way along there, that whole edge has got to come off. Mm -hmm. That edge has got to come off a little bit down there. And a little tiny, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little tiny edge on the top that we're going to do there. So let's start there. So we just line them up again. And this is actually a lot easier because the stickers are translucent, so you can see through. And you've got, since you've got the white paper down here, you can see through and actually see where it is. And then we cut it again with with no hesitation. If you actually hesitate, sometimes we get stuck. And there we go. Pull it off. Then we'll go to one that's just a sticker. So, question. Let's say that this is my first time doing this. Right. Would you recommend that maybe I, I err a little bit on the side of, like, cutting less so that I can move inwards yes. as I need to cut more? Okay. Yes. Well, y no. Well, yes and no. Um... The problem is, is you can actually cut so close that the next cut is almost impossible. Oh, yeah. You know, that I mean, you can get very, very thin. As you can see, I'm getting very, very, very thin cuts. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can get so thin that it's, you know, going to start burring up the edges. Mm. Um, and one of the things that you can do is it's also, since we're acceptable in messed up edges, it's almost better to err on the side of not, unless, I mean, I'll do, I want, I don't want to do it. It's against my principles. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but one of the things you can do is err a little bit on the edge and just be like, okay, well, I want to make sure that I get this and why, and feel okay about when you do this. Like, if you look at these, you know, some of these caught some card that wasn't exposed. You know, it came off with, you know, some sticker came off of it. I'm okay with it. You know, if you go a little bit over, you're going to get a nice straight line. It's going to make sure to get all the sticker. There's not, there's going to be no, and one of the reasons we get the sticker off is because the sticker is sticky in your, in your sleeves. We don't like that. And it also looks ugly. Yeah. As you can see, you actually can see it. But if you cut it off, you're still going to have a nice clean border. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're just going to have a shorter border if you go in a little on the inside. Um, you'll, I'll often find that if I'm having trouble lining it up, I'll often come a little bit on the inside and shave just a little hair of a card all off, all the way off if I'm having trouble getting that last hair of sticker off. Um, but usually after practice you'll get to the point where you can where you can shave whatever off. And it doesn't take that long to get to that point. Alright. Good. <laughs> so, you know, that, I mean, I shaved just a little hair and we'll see that I mean, that's all just sticker and it's like, there we go, we can see it's that thin. You know, and that's all just stickers, so you can get super, super thin. 
and you're going to want to pull, be sure to check every time you do this to pull it off the blade like that, you know, oh yeah, to check the blade, there's mm -hmm. the fin, fin thing, you know, pull them off the blade and stick them to the paper, you know, and stick them to the paper so that they don't go everywhere. So, let's check the next one. Let's just finish up this card real quick. So this one I got a little bit of card, extra card, because it's already been trimmed this way and it actually makes for a, um, a straighter edge. I'm not going to do a full straight edge. Sometimes I will. In um, this case I won't because it doesn't really add that much. And we're not really losing that much by not doing it. And we get the last one. And that should do most of the trimming. Now if we look on the front, we double check to make sure all of our edges. Oh, we look here. We notice, I don't know if you can see this camera, I'll pull down here Is in the light. Bottom corner? The bottom corner here. There we are. Still foil. There's an, ed there's an edge of foil there that we missed. So, sometimes we just don't see those things. There isn't any more. <laughs> so now there's no edge there. The little corner there we got to take care of. So we've done that. Everything looks okay. We've got a little foil corner there. So now we do the next step, <coughs> which is actually the final step. Well, not the final step. Final trimming step. We take our much maligned scissors and we trim off the points of that are sticking out. The sticker sticking out. Now, one of the things that's up to you. Um, I do it because I do it. Um, a lot of times you'll end up with square corners. Let's just straight up square corners because of the you know this thing cut square. Yeah. There's something I need to mention about cutting square. Um, Those can do... Oh, yeah, your idea first. Cutting square. Uh, uh, one side note into trimming. When we cut the cards apart, you notice that I lined them up here and I didn't use the straight edge. I'm sorry, I should have put this in in the earlier part. You may be wondering why I didn't use the straight edge. The reason... And I'll have to get a blank sheet. I will be back in just one second. Okay, I'll get it. Okay, sorry, and I should have brought this up earlier. Now, the reason we don't cut, use the square up here is if you look carefully, Magic Set Editor does not put the cards on the paper square. Oh. Now, I actually returned my first paper cutter accusing them of a, of a defect because I couldn't cut my paper square because I didn't even notice because it's, it's off by just a little bit. But every time I'd cut it, I'd, you know, cut with the square. I'd line it up perfectly on the edge. Well, bang and... Holy cow! Look yeah. at that difference! Jeez. And I was like, this paper cutter doesn't cut square! I want one that cuts square! Well, it's not the paper cutter, it's the paper. So Magic Editor does not print them square, do not use the square. Sorry I forgot to mention that earlier. Anyway, back to trimming. Glad we got to it though, yeah? Yes, important. Mm -hmm. So, back to trimming. We trim the corners of the extra, the, the extra sticker off. We turn it over, we look for any corners that show foil sticking through. We cut those off. And then if you're like me, you actually trim the square corners to be a little round. I mean, not very round, but just a little rounder. Just so they're not like points. They do look more like magic cards this way, and they're healthier for the sleeves too, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I trim those off, um, and that one's done. Now, one more step for this card. And we're going to do it right now. Oh, Pretty yeah, good in the sleeve. Beautiful. This card is ready for a sleeve. So now we got it in the sleeve. We do one last check over. Is there any foil parts screaming at us? No, there's not. And we're being done. in a black sleeve lets that come out so much more easily, yeah. Like you said. Like exactly. You, said you can, that, the, the, the foil edges stand out perfectly. Mm -hmm. So, we've got that. Perfect, all done, ready nice. to go in the box. So I'm gonna trim one more for you to show you one last thing, because this one this one is one of the perfect ones. And you wonder, well, what is the perfect one? Well, that's not a perfect one. That's not a perfect one. This is one of the perfect ones. You know, you don't see any foil at all. What do we need to trim here? Well, if we look over here, we've got slivers of sticker on That's all right. edges. And like you said before, the reason you don't want the sticker there is because it'll get stuck in the sleeve, right? Exactly. You gum things up. Mm -hmm. Look, it's just so nasty. even though it looks nice, if you actually put it in the sleeve, 
you might not be wanting to take it back out. Exactly. So again, we just line them up, chop them off real quick and easy. Now, you notice my chopper is still going very, very quickly with no problems. I am, you know, going fast. I don't think I'm going to, I'm not going to do enough cars to make a difference. Okay. Well, I'm going to do this one then. Right at the end, we're going to say that, well, we're going to do this one. We're going to do the maintenance thing. There is some maintenance you need to do while doing this. Um, we're still getting good. Well, we're starting to get a little, yep. You see, it's starting to not be as quite as tight. Um, make sure you pull all the stakers off. Mm -hmm. So now, well, let me just finish trimming this one, just to finish this card. Uh, did we miss the bottom side, or? Oh, no, that was fine already, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I did miss this side. All right. Okay. So. Then. Perfect, and there is some that you can actually see. Perfect. So now I'm going to take the corners out because we uh, we don't like the pointed corners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bad for the sleeves. They're gummy. They look ugly. Especially since they're still clear, you can actually you can still see them. And now it's even more perfect. And now it's even more perfect. We double check to see if there's any places that show any foils sticking through. Everything looks good. Every lines look clean. Ready for a sleeve. Now. One thing we noticed when we went through is one of our cuts wasn't quite as clean as we'd like. Well, actually, it really was, but I'm lying for the sake of the video. Sue me. <laughs> so our cut wasn't as clean, and if we look over here, Jay moves his camera over here whoop, onto whoop, this whoop, side. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Wrong side, Jay. Oh, this side. My bad. Where my finger is. <laughs> pointed at my finger. I thought finger. you meant this side, like, at the blade. Yeah, you, you got it pointed at time. the finger here, we can, you might be able to see along here, there's some, well, it's goo. And there's goo along the bottom of the blade now. After these number of cuts, it's not really a problem. After I did probably the whole sheet, if I did the whole sheet, it definitely would be a problem. Mm -hmm. Every so often, you're going to want to do this. Grab your acetone. Grab your rag. And then just, you know, dab it like this. Just get your ass this wet. It doesn't need to be, it just needs to be damp. Like a get your ass wet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get your rag wet with acetone. Um, gotcha. Get it just damp. Doesn't need to be really that wet, and then just rub the blade down. Mm -hmm. This will pull all the goo from the sticker off the blade. And you'll get a much cleaner cut, just like that. And then you're going to want to do it to the downside blade as well. And then something I usually forget and I don't do on every cycle, you know, it's it's several, you know, like a page or two, and I'll, and I'll clean these blades. Because um, I like making sure that the, the, I get nice, clean cuts. Um, and you will notice it when it starts to come up. Mm -hmm. Something I won't do every time, but you should do is then, you know, especially when you're done, is clean your scissors. Your scissors are also going to get gummed up, and your scissors are especially going to get gummed up with corners mm -hmm. of cards, you know, because the corners are primarily going to be just like triangles of stickers, uh, of sticker paper, and they're just going to get stuck to the blade, and they're not going to go anywhere, and so you're going to need to use the acetone to get them off. So you Good clean, point. So you clean the blade with acetone, these, these, these blades with acetone as, as well, every so often. Again, you don't need to clean the scissors as often, um, but you do need to clean the blade fairly regularly to keep that nice, crisp cut. Um, and that's trimming. Cards are in sleeves. Sleeves go in, you know, once cards are in sleeves, they then go in the box. And that's how you make, uh, so you make four cards. Um, so that's how you make four cards. Um, uh, questions? Anything else I want to say? Disclaimer um, again, I guess. Disclaimer, important thing. Important thing, disclaimer. Do not sell these. Do not sell these. Do not use these in any sanctioned event at your local gaming store. You will get not only you, but the gaming store in trouble. Don't do it. Other than that, have fun, make tokens. Um, we actually might not be fully done at some point. We were, were thinking about extending this video with an accessories for the cube. Oh, yeah. I went a little overboard on my accessories, but I don't have them all here yet. They're still on, some of them are still on the way. So we can talk about some cool accessories and in doing so like we'll talk about tokens. Um, and then at that point, um, but until then, I think that covers everything. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything. Enjoy making cubes. 
questions and you know, leave them in the comments and whatnot. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Sean. I appreciate it. Yeah. And so that's how you make a cube. Accessories. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble with wizards. None of Don't that. Don't get yourself in trouble with wizards. Indeed. And acknowledge your artists. Yes. <laughs> acknowledge your artists. You might think it doesn't matter, but it does. Especially Rebecca Gay. And Therese Nielsen. Yes, and Therese said. Nielsen. Because she makes the best lands. Ah, uh, yeah. Noah Bradley. Yeah, gotcha. So anyway, go have fun. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs>